All right, so um, tonight we back again with another one. Uh, this is HG study, you know, hidden God studies. But tonight we got a we got a presentation. Um, I got my brother Khalil with me, and alongside him, I got uh, if you don't know, you 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 need to act like you know or something, because uh, we got we got our good brother Dr. Aleem L. Bay. Mm. Um, and like I said, man, I've known this brother for some years. Every time I hit this brother behind the scenes, he's always kept it a hundred, always been a real brother, knew him before the whole YouTube wave. But, uh, I hit him up and I said, you know, got to get you on my format, man. And, uh, he welcomed me with open arms. So, um, tonight, you know, y'all get y'all, get y'all a little drink. You know what I mean? You want to roll you something up? But uh, we're going to let Aline do what he does. He's got some information that he's going to share with the family. And like I said, I'm just blessed to have him on, on the format to do his thing. Uh, he's going to get into Giants, Titans, and the Tartarian Empire. All right? And uh, I'm going to let Aline also touch on what he does for those who have been living under a rock and don't know. Aline, go ahead and let the people know what it is you do, what uh, services you offer, and uh, anything you want to let the people know, any type of events you got going on, plus your contact before we let you let you out the gate. All right. Um, for those that have never gone to my um, website, you can go to draalimelbay.com, D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y.com. You can go there and find any herbal products in which that you need for health and healing. You can also find out what services. I am the president of um, Healing Wings um, Institute in which that we do provide services in Reiki, various forms of Reiki, Kundalini Reiki, Tibetan Reiki, um, Angelic Reiki, Shekmat uh, 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 Reiki or Shekmat Reiki, which is um, ancient Kemetic Reiki. Um, so um, in Ushi Reiki. Uh, we, we do all of that, as well as Qigong, Tai Chi, pranic healing, uh, acupressure, reflexology, iridology, herbalism, you know, so we, we do it all, you know, so uh, for those that's interested in the services, you can definitely go to the website and check it out. Um, also, you can hit me up at drdalimelbay.com um, or at drdalimelbay at gmail. Dot com, um, which is my um, email, um, as well as also you can hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, um, those places too. All right. Awesome. And then now I'm going to kick it to my brother, my brother Khaled. Man, we go back, brother. You know what I mean? Whew. Way back before the before this YouTube thing was a thing. Man. And uh, you, got, you got your thing going on, man, with the uh, Truth Seekers Temple. Go ahead, and, go ahead and let the people know a little something about what you got going on in your on your format, brother. Um, yeah, man. For me, um, before I even get to me, man, again, I just want to pay, oh, man, just the utmost homage to Dr. Arlene Bay, man, just for, um, this is 2002, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sitting down and was going through a bunch of different VHS catalogs, you know what I'm saying? Phil Valentine, Delbert Blair, C. Freeman, Eel. And this cat came on, <laughs> pulled up a book in his hand that was a Black's Law Dictionary and started talking about Moore's Law. And I was like, right. But right. from that day on, I had to make contact. Made contact with the brother. This is the most... I mean, it was one of the most honorable conversations I ever had. I mean, just generally like, yo, brother, I'm glad you like the work. Here's how you get involved. Here's how you get plugged in. Shared the heritage of the Washita with me. Now that I remember, Return of the Ancient Ones, man. I actually had that first, the first copy of Return of the Ancient Ones. Dr. Alim was like, yo, blessings, here you go. And I, we went in, to sue the United Nations as indigenous peoples, I mean, like, just, oh man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Chief. Hold on, Chief. Say what? Run that back. 
Man, Dr. Eileen led a movement with the Washita and the mound builders of all indigenous tribes. Some were smart enough to realize what the brother was doing. Others were like, nah, I ain't doing it. And I ain't leaving it, so I'm not going to be involved. Long story short, we caravaned up there together to go to the UN and put in mad paperwork, spent mad time, and the brother was just, again, the whole time was completely selfless and just sharing this information, helping you uncover your identity, giving you what you needed. And I remember, man, I, I never forget just sitting down next to the brother and he was speaking. And I was just like, man, this is like one of the greatest moments of my life right here, man. Like yeah. I discovered myself and I actually had a brother who helped lead me to the self-discovery, like present, you know what I'm saying? Like kicking the knowledge. I was, it completely changed the trajectory of my life, man. I'm dead in jail if I don't meet you, I'm a bay and a newer. I can tell you right now in Jelani, though, those that that was my holy square right there, man. You guys like really changed me at the time when I was like a knucklehead, like lost, lost. And uh took me out of the matrix, man. My Morpheus. So just to have you on right now is just an honor, man. I had to get it. Aleem always he always been a real one. That's one thing I appreciate him, man. Always it's been fun. real. Yeah, Always that was my gateway to consciousness, I mean? man. My little brother woke me up, and then after that, man, it was like it was like the universe, like, yo, here's what you need to get yourself together. You know what I'm saying? Um, True Seekers Temple was something I actually came up with um, after a suicide attempt, man. I had lost a major business and uh, a huge opportunity and uh, attempted suicide, man. Like, wow. talking about, like, you know, an accident or a cry for help, I mean, I was out of here. And, you know, God brought me back, man. It was like, yo, you know, here's your new focus. You know, here's what you're supposed to be doing. I spent four days just in conversation with God. Mm. And when I came back, it was just basic level healing. You know what I'm saying? Giving people a chance to have a safe space to share their truth, whatever it is. I don't care. You can be a blaming racist. Get on my show and share your truth. And I have to appreciate it because that's a version of who you are. That's your projection, whether it be a projection that you made up or a projection of real truth that you have uncovered through your life's journey. We don't knock it. And what we have found is when people are allowed to share their truth, it ends up giving them the confidence to live, you know what I'm saying, upright, to give them the confidence to like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not crazy, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm not off my rocker. Maybe this, 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 you know, this stuff that I've been thinking, dreaming and feeling my whole life is, it's really got some substance to it. Nice. And again, that's what consciousness is, is, is being aware of how to move. And it's just really, really, really a safe space for brothers to kick it, man. Love to have you brothers on. Highs is on every Sunday. So we'd love to invite you on, man, just to, no problem. Just to kick it, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take the floor. I just had to pay homage. Oh, no, you good. I'm still you know, a fan, without, man. You know what without I'm further ado. Still a fan. Daniel Bay. We got him on here. I'm going to hit the topic one more time. Uh, we're going to get into, the brother has a presentation, I should say. So like I said, uh, get your drinks. We're going to let him out the gates. He's going to be building on Giants, Titans, and the Tartarian Empire. Mr. Dr. Aleem L. Bay. Do your thing, brother. Do your thing, God. All right, God. Appreciate y'all for having me on. And I'm going to get straight to the topic. Um, of course, got to show the infringement copyright because um, I will be going over some information in which that, uh, according to the fair use, will be allowed for purposes of criticism, news, reporting, teaching, and parody. Of course, we're going to get some of all of that in there. And um, I wanted to say this, that the first step in liquidating a people is to erase his memory, destroy his books, his culture, his history then have someone write new books, manufacture a new culture, invite a new, invent a new history. Before long, the nation will begin to forget what it is and what it was. All right, so um, I'm saying all this leading up to the fact that the information within the Tartarian Empire has been hidden. It has been destroyed. And we'll get to some of that in a few 
But before we even get to Tartarian Empire, we're going to also deal with the Titans, all right? Um, and the Titans are the beings in which that uh, have come down from space, as we refer to them as. Some refer to them as the fallen angels. Some say extraterrestrials. Whatever term that you want to refer to them as, um, that's us, for lack of a better term, all right? Um, we talk about the soul portions of ourselves, all right? So it says, before long, the nation will forget, um, begin to forget what it is and what it was. And that's exactly what has happened. This is um, Mylan um, Kodura, and it's called The Book of Laughter and Forgetting, all right? And then we had another one, which was a very powerful statement, and this is by um, George Orwell, 1984, for those that read the book, written in 1948. And he says that every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, every statue and street building has been renamed, every date has been altered, and the process of continuing day by day and minute by minute, all right, history has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless presence in which the party is always right, all right? Um, George Orwell is saying this for a reason. Uh, Milan um, Kadara is saying it for a purpose. And you'll see why they are saying these things when we get to the historical aspect. But before we get there, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, long before there was ever a Caucasian or a white race on the face of the earth, you and I and our fathers were. All right? He's plural, our fathers. All right? Meaning that there was also our mothers. All right? But not just thousands of years, not just hundreds of thousands of years, not just millions of years, not just billions of years, but trillions of years ago, according to the word, word of Almighty God Allah to me that we and our fathers were here, all right, here on planet Earth, throughout all seven continents as they're now referred to as. There is no birth record, meaning there is no beginning record of the black people that has, they have been here forever and forever they have. We don't know nothing about the beginning. There is no prophecy of ending, any ending of them. This is known, the world knows it. The Albion knows it, but he still tries to persist with population control agenda. He cannot get rid of us. We are called Bay Bay kids, all right? Um, Bay Bay. And now that we know that we are Bays, <laughs> we are Bay Bay kids for real, all right? Um, and he writes, uh, and this was in Master Farah Muhammad, not a silk peddler, all right? Um, in another book called Black Root Science, it says stars are the condensation of the minds of our ancestors who came from the previous universe. So when you physically die, your mind all right, goes into what is called the Orion Nebula, where it is born again and become a star up in the sky. Okay, this is seen on the movie Lion King. Mm. Simba and Mufasa. Mufasa was his father, and when he died, he became a star in the sky. If Simba wanted to communicate with his father, Mufasa, he looked up to the star. They did the same thing in Black Panther, too, King. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Same thing in Black Panther, exactly. All right. So at the end of the previous universe, our ancestors expanded their mind beyond measure until it encompassed the whole universe. Now, a whole universe, according to um, Elijah Muhammad's teaching, our universe is 76 quintillion miles in diameter. So that means that our minds, all of our minds collectively will have to encompass the whole universe. And once that happens, that process of expansion will cause an apparent contraction of the universe until it is reduced to the size of a single planet. In stages in the empty space surrounding the new earth, creating the seven substances, magnetism, electricity, light, heat, energy, and etc., which eventually forms the new stars after millions of trillions of years. All right, so this is how the new stars will come into existence. All right. Um, which, of course, once again, are the condensations of the minds of our ancestors, 
all right? Um, this is something else that was said in Black Roots Science. Therefore, what we call reality is actually a causal, meaning a higher mental or similar to a computer program construct, i.e. matrix, simulation maintained by us, our minds, and the minds of our ancestors who are no longer in human form through a casual consent. So we consented to this, all right? This is why you have the movie Matrix. Neo is one who said, I would no longer consent to the confines of this matrix. You too do not have to any longer be confined to the construct of this matrix, all right? Um, by forming your macabre, by learning the 18 breath, 24, 28 breath, breath technique, um, and Javalo Melchizedek rediscovered this information and brought it back to the limelight. But this was taught in ancient Kemet, Egypt, um, Tamari, in which that you can form your body into an actual light vehicle or ship. All right. Um, there's a good book on that. You can get the book. Um, the Zulu Bone Oracle, all right? The Zulu Bone Oracle, um, uh, uh, Credo Moutois. He actually wrote the introduction to that book, the forwarded uh, introduction to the book, all right? Give me that title one more time, God. The Zulu Bone Oracle. Matter of fact, I'll show it to y'all. And oh. read Can y'all see it? We got you, God. Yep. All right. So the Zulu Bone Oracle is by um Lulu, um Lu Yulu Fudu. All right. And when you go in and you read the forward page, and I'm going to read that because it's going to deal with what we're talking about, because this is once again part of the Titans. Um, and the Martian energy, which um, is returning. This is reason why the planet uh, in the United States actually is looking um, like portions of the damn uh, Mars. <laughs> uh, if you notice, uh, places like Oregon, California, Washington State, um, Iowa, um, and on and on is looking orange. And yeah, reddish. Real red and yeah. Red, red and, yeah. Red. Even in Turkey, it's looking the same way. All right. In different places around the planet. So um what happened is that this Martian energy has now um connected along with this Beetlejuice energy and along with this serious energy and this new Beardian um energy. Um Actually, all of this is the Omekian energy, if you want to know the truth of the matter. It's all connected, all right? Um, but this is what we was talking about, too, and I'm going to get to the part in the book with Credo Moutois in a second. I got an actual clip of him talking about it on here. Um, but uh, right here, we have a um, myriad of stars that is the seventh heaven. The Milky Way galaxy is the sixth heaven. The Sirius star system um, is the along with the central star, uh, which is actually in the Pleiades, is the fifth heaven. The fourth is the solar sphere. The third is the lunar sphere. And the second is our atmosphere. All right. Um, the first is the, is the inner earth. The inner earth. All right. Um, Matter of fact, uh, in the inner earth, we have the reptilians who's known as the Abdullah Broth, the Archons, deceivers of the nations, and the Greys, their workers. Um, and they're part of the inner earth. Um, there's other beings there, known as the Tiros, the Diros, and the Flugoroids, and et cetera. And these entities um, was part of the so-called biblical fallen angels entombed or imprisoned, according to the book of Revelation, for millions of years. And they are trying to escape and terraform the planet Earth and terraform us physically. This is what the GMO food is about. 
and externally, this is what the chemtrails is about, the fluoride in the water, all these types of things. These are, these are actually my altering agents in the atmosphere and in the water supply and in the food. Um, the, GM, the GMO food is actually genetically modified organisms that are there in order to take out certain sequences of, uh, of um, what we refer to it as, of insert of information in your genetics and take out the inserts and remove the inserts and instill its inserts into, into your particular genetic structure, into your DNA, all right? Um, and the planet Earth, Earthlings, to come back to dwell on top. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to, um, to come back on top of the planet Earth. Um, for those that have, may, may not even have seen these beings, it's real easy to recognize them. A real being can get in about three feet of the auric field of the individual. And they, in these hybrids, you can actually see their eyes go slit. Because your auric field will make them so nervous that they actually would change in front of you. And if you already have the mindset that you want to see, you know what I'm saying, what's really going on, then you will, you will actually see what's taking place. All right. Um, Ross Ben, he did this book right here. As you see, I'm holding up the Rocks of Ages. He speaks about some of this. Um, you know, he basically says that, uh, that they're not extraterrestrial, celestial beings, um, um, but actually they are the inner earth beings. And he says also that the so-called black people actually are the guardians of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I thought I had the... Uh, yeah, it's all right. You can get down. <laughs> I got two of them. All right. So, um, so this takes us to Sirius. Since he spoke about Sirius, this is um, Lard um, Stratton. Um, Facebook friend here, and, he's, and he breaks down um, the information about the Dogon through these magnificent books. You got to get your hands on them. The Science of the Dogon, Decoding the African Mystery Tradition, The Sacred Symbols of the Dogon, The Key to Advanced Science in the Ancient Egyptian High Glyphs, and the Cosmological um, Origin of the Myth and Symbols from the Dogon in Ancient Egypt to India, Tibet, and China. All right. Um, in the serious mysteries, um, well, serious times, uh, it was a magazine that was coming out from um, Atlanta, Georgia, about 25 years ago, actually, um, back in the mid 90s. It says, according to the Dogon, Egyptians, Mayans, Olmecs, etc., we originally came to this planet from Sirius and Orion. The Nomos, or dolphin type beings, that came here to this planet from a planet that orbited star Sirius system. We at one time were able to breathe underwater. And at that time we were, we had gills in our throats like fish do today. The gills are what we call tonsils. The tonsils would draw in the water mist of the, um, with the breath, separate the water mist from the oxygen and allow the water to escape through the opening behind our ears. This also, um, also, at this time, the appendix um, was an active organ. However, it is now atrophied. It is from our ancient records that we get cartoons like Man from Atlantis or Aquarian, uh, um, um, Aquaman. We are still amphibious beings that live nine months in our mother's womb. Your mother is the creator, not the father. The word creator means to grow, and it is in the mother's womb that you grow from a seed sperm cell. As stated before, the creator of the universe is a feminine force, not masculine. This, again, is a product of a male chauvinistic religion. And this right here um, at the bottom is actually a hieroglyph of a mermaid, all right, which still exists, which I won't get into that information, but I'm just showing you that these are the guardians of the planet Earth in water and on top of the um, surface of the Earth. All right, this is the star Sirius. Um, taking close up, and this is the serious mysteries. This is Robert Temple, and this is what he says. I'm not going to read everything, but 
uh, he, he brings in something very important here. This is what it says. The tale was the secret Dogon creation myth about this sacred star, which they call Potolo. The star in which they are referenced is Sirius, which located some 8.6 or 8.7 light years from Earth. Sirius is also the brightest star in the night sky. All right. Um, he goes in he, right here. He says, Dogon oral traditions about quite um, animately states that they have known for thousands of years that Jupiter has moons and Saturn had rings around it. All right. Um, I won't get into that right now, but uh, he breaks this down right here. Um, also, um, in the Serious Mysteries. Um, also, get the book, The Serious Connection by, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Murray Hope. I think his name, that is his name. Unlocking the Secrets of Ancient Egypt. Also, get the Pale Fox. This is by two Frenchmen. And um, don't even get me to try to pronounce their names. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. But, Get the Pale Fox. That is a um, very important book. They are the first in order to put this information about the Dogons, bringing it out to the public. All right, but right here, Dogon um, uh, speaks about um, our solar system seem to be referred to as Ogo, Pacenta. Now, Ogo is the same as Abdalabro. And Ogo broke away from out of his mother, Sophia. This is according to the Gnostic text. And according to the Dogon, Ogu broke out from, um, um, Adolibro broke out from Sophia, out of the womb of Sophia, and wanted to reproduce, well, wanted to produce life himself. Well, same thing happened with Ogu. Ogu wanted, uh, uh, broke out of Ama, um, you know what I'm saying, and wanted to create life. So it says, our solar system is referred to as Ogu's placenta. All right, whereas the system of the star Sirius and its companion star and satellites, uh, et cetera, is referred to as Nomo's placenta. Nomo is the collective name for the great cultured history and founder of civilization who came from the star um, Sirius star, um, system to set up society on Earth. Nomo, or to be more precise, the Nomos were amphibious creatures and are to be seen in the two tribal drawings, figure 32 and figure 34 of this book, which is tomorrow's serious mysteries. These nomos are more or less equivalent with the Babylonian, Sumerian, and the Babylonian traditions of Ones. All right, um, showing once again, um, we come down, even the Albion, further right somebody, you have Alice Bailey, all right, um, who was the second female head of the Theosophical Society. Um, she writes this, whether there must serious, uh, well, come down. She writes a serious, and she says, all that can be done here is dealing with this profound subject is to enumerate briefly some of the cosmic influences which definitely affects our earth and the produce results in the consciousness of men's everywhere, in which during the process of initiation, being about certain specific phenomena, first and foremost is the energy or force emanating from the sun series. If it may be so expressed, the energy of thought or mind force in its totality reaches the solar system from a distant cosmic center via Sirius. Sirius acts as a transmitter or the focalizing center which emanates the, those influences which produces self-consciousness in man. So Sirius is the sun behind the sun. All right. All right, and here it is. There was giants upon the earth, gods, demigods, and the uh, Human Ancestry, the Evidence of Alien DNA by Zachariah Sension. All right. Um, he breaks this down, which I'm going to not read everything, but you're going to see right here. Um, all that has the very same DNA, the four nuclear acid letters, which 
all genes and genomes are made up. Those four letters, of course, is um, A, G, T, C. Adenine, guanine, um, tyrosine, and uh, uh, what is the other one? Uh, I can't remember, but it's four of them. All right, and these are the four building blocks of life in which that everything on planet Earth. That's what it says right here. All life on Earth, from birds to fishes, flora to algae, and down to bacteria and viruses, all have the very same DNA. All right, that means everything had these four basic nucleic acid letters, which mix about with genes and genome. All right. Okay. Yeah, I know I got it up in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. And uh, all right. Yeah, if you're talking about the four letters, I better get yeah, that Yahweh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is nothing more than Yahweh. Yeah. Those four basic letters is who we get Yahweh, Yahi Vahe. Those four letters is Yahweh. And um, this is why it says that God is our creator or uh, Yahweh is our creator is because it's talking about our genome, our DNA, those four amino acids in which that are the building blocks of life. And like I said, uh, we have, um, oh, okay, um, adenine, um, adenine, guanine, um, tyrosine, and um, cytosine, um, cytosine, cytosine, something like that. Um, but these are the four um, amino acids, all right? And of course, um, for those that want to learn more, you can get my book, The First World Order, all right? Um, I go in about that topic, subject. And so this is what it says. This means that, um, that means that the DNA of the Anunnaki matches the DNA of all life on Earth. Uh, basically, what that means is that from the DNA of the Anunnaki is how everything got produced and made on Earth. It's from those four basic amino acids, from their own selves. All right? And this is what, basically what um, Zachariah Sitchin is, is saying. And if, as should be assumed, the DNA of the Anunnaki was the same as the DNA on life on Nibiru, then we must conclude that the DNA on Earth and the DNA on Nibiru are the same. All right? All right. Oh, that's it. Yeah. All right. We'll make sure that we got the right terminology for you here. Um, to, 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 to. All right. Thi um, it's called thiamine, guanine, cytosine, and adenine. And, ad and adenine. So these are the four basic amino acids. Exactly. All right, thanks, God. All right, so in a historic breakthrough, two scientific teams announced on um, February 2001 that the sequence of the complete human genome and the principal fi findings was that our genome contains not the anticipated 1,000 or 140,000 genes with stretches of DNA that directs the producers of the amino acids and proteins, but less than 30,000, only about double that of 13,601 um, genes of a fruit, fruit, fruit fly, and barely 50% more than that of a round worm, which is 19,098. However, there was hardly any uniqueness to the human genes. They were found comparable to almost 99% of the chimpanzee, of course, that's theirs, and to 70% of the mouse, human genes with the same functions were found to be identical to genes of other vertebrates as well as invertebrates, plants, fungi, even yeast. The findings not only confirmed that there was one source of DNA for all life on Earth, but also enabled the science to trace the evolutionary process how more complex organisms evolve genetically from simple ones, adapting to each stage the genes of a lower life form to create a more complex higher life form, accumulating with Homo sapien or Homo sapien sapien. Yo, right? I, let me ask, yo, God, because I, I was thinking about this, I was like, damn, and this is kind of came to me, it's like, damn, did we, we came from plants, you can kind of say. 
Well, like, go came... back, like break that right. down, like with with right. the plant life. Right. Well. You know what I'm right. 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 Well, this is this is what we figured is that based on what I'm getting ready to show you, as I'm only leading up to to break down on how we actually came here, mm. and. And, and once once we see that, you want to see how we had to insert ourselves in creation. Go ahead, right? God. Got you. This, this is what God means. This is what we see when we say that God created, um, created, but yet God became part of creation. So within creation, everything is part of God. All right. So everything has part of our genome or genetic structure. And this is what this is being shown. So right here, journal science. Issue number 291 terms it was that the human genome contains 223 genes that do not have any pre um, predecessors on the genomic evolutionary tree. In fact, these 223 genes were found to be completely missing in the whole range of the vertebrate um, phrase of evolution. All right? In analysis of the function of these genes, published in journal Nature, issue 409, shows that their involvement import, involve important physiological and cerebral function, particularly to humans. Since the difference between man and chimpanzee is just about 300 genes, these 223 genes makes a huge difference. How did man acquire such a branch of uh, um, enamicic genes? It says, the scientists could only explain the presence of these alien genes by a rather recent evolutionary time scale. This is what this is what they, you know, this is what they saying. Right, right, right. They try. How did we get so far above the monkey? <laughs> how is this possible? <laughs> Problem: um, a horizontal transfer from bacteria suggested that there are no genes acquired through evolution, but genes acquired through recent infection from bacteria. So the ancients were using infection from bacteria to hyper superize us. <laughs> All right. And see, they're still trying to go with this monkey theory, but man was here before monkey, as I'm getting ready to show. So here, Dogon say that the first eight ancestors, the Nomos, were amphibious beings. They look like a cross between dolphins and humans. In other words, mermaids, mermaids. And they travel from Sirius to Earth in a pyramidal shaped craft called the Corona. Una, the, um, the progenitors of the humanity, rode in a Corona, which contains food that they needed to plant on Earth. The eighth um, celestial grains are mullet, black rice, chickpea, taff, um, sorghum, wheat, kamut, um, brown rice, maize, gung, gung and the pigeon pea. The Dogon say that the corona contain all of the material, information and science that humanity would need to make the Earth environments compatible for human existence. Well, what they call the corona, all right, um, is saying that road on a ship, but really what it's talking about is the seeds. Those four amino acids that we just talked about is known as the corona, or the corona, or cor uh oh, the corona, uh oh. Anyway, <laughs> but this is the real corona, or corona. All right, this is the real one. Right, right. And this right here says contain all of the materials, information, and science. That is talking about the four amino acids that we just broke down. So it is even spoken of within the mythology of the Dogon. It is shared with us that this is what happened. That's what you're saying. It's like CTAG. Yup, yup. So we get to Saturn because we talked about Sirius, but guess what happens with Saturn? You get the book, The Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknick and um, Clive Prince. The truth about extraterrestrial life and the mysteries of ancient Egypt. All right. 
it goes on. It says, very little can be communicated with this path in the mysteries of this influence and in the, in the secret of the star Sirius or hidden facts of our cosmic evolution and incidentally, therefore, of our solar system. First and foremost is the energy and force emanating from the sun Sirius. If you may be, um, it, if it may be expressed, the energy of thought and mind force in its totality reaches the solar system from a distant cosmic center via Sirius. Once again, Sirius acts as a transmitter or the focalizing center which emanates these influences which reduces um, self-consciousness, produces self-consciousness in man. The Tibetans added that this energy does not reach Earth directly from Sirius, but is first beamed to Saturn before passing on to us. This agrees with the Council of Nine um, pronouncement through Caller um, uh, Rukert and with Hakat teachings. The Tibets communicate through communicating through Alice Bailey also makes another major connection with the secret teachings of Freemasonry. According to the Tibetans, Freemasonry is a terrestrial version of an, um, of an initiatory school that existed on Sirius, and that the various um, higher, um, 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 I guess you could say the hierarchical de degrees of Freemasonry are parallel or analogs of the different levels of initiation that an adept must go through in order to enter the greater lodge of, on Sirius. This is what is called the White Brotherhood, all right? But here, the Tibetan claims that the Masons had a very ancient connection to Sirius, all right? So um, if you get in Freemasonry, um, um, they refer to it as the Blazing Star in Freemasonry. That's what they call it, the Blazing Star. But I wanted to show you that the Tibetans added that this energy does not reach Earth directly from Sirius, but it first beamed to Saturn. So when we get to this, then we find Norman Burgeon, who wrote The Ringmakers of Saturn, another book. And what he said. Now, people might say, oh, Norman Burgeon is a quack. Well, this is NACA and NASA. He's a member, all right? And Norman Burgeon, um, describes seeing seven foot black people in a giant spaceship vehicle in Siri, in Siri, in um, excuse me, not Siri, but in Saturn. Matter of fact, the woman that's in this video here said dark skinned people after the NASA guy says black people. <laughs> okay, matter of fact, he goes on and say, no, black. All right, so this is what he shows in his book. This is infrared photograph of one of the gigantic, um, um, the cylinder, um, um, derical objects taken by Hubble in the ring of Saturn. All right, this is one of the ships as he's, as he's saying that it is. Now, this makes sense when you go to the book of Enoch. All right, this is the um, translation from the Ethiopian book of Enoch by R.H. Charles, 1906. It says in this chapter six, and it came to pass that when the children of men had multiplied, that in the those days was born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heavens, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose um, us wives from among the children of men, and begat us children. And Sajasa, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and all binding ourselves by mutual um, implication, um, not to abandon his plan, but to do this thing. Then swear, they all together, swore all together and bound themselves by mutual implication upon it. And they were in all 200, metaphysically the 200 symbolizes the 200 bones in your body approximately. I won't get to that, but I wanted to say that. It's in my book. Oh, um, right. Exactly. Who, uh, uh, you know, we got to give it the metaphysical. Um, who descended in the days of Jared on the <laughs> summit of Mount Harmon. Now that's crazy. 
that Mount Harmon, and guess what? I was born, um, I was raised on Harmon Street in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> wow. All right. My first years, all right, was growing up on Harmon Street in Brooklyn, New York. No correlation necessary to Mount Harmon, but it could be a coincidence. And they um, called it Mount Harmon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual implications of punning. And these are the names of these leaders. Sam Lazet, their leader, Arakipa, or Alakapa, um, Ramel, um, Kukal, um, Kukab El, Tamel, uh, Tamel, Ramel, uh, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, Hold up, Ezekiel. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. um, Barikel, <laughs> Azael. Oh, Azael is Israel. Oh, shit. Um, Amaros, <laughs> Babatel, Anael, Zakiel, and Samsapil, and Zotardiel, and Torel, Zom, um, Jon, Jael, and Zariel. These are the chiefs of 10. All right, so note, 200 fallen angels descending on Mount Harmon, which Saturn is known as the Black Planet. In the days of Gerard, before Noah's time, they were sentenced underground, as we just finished talking about, about these reptilians and other beings that's underground. Before the flood, the Vatican and the um, United Nations were working underground with them. This is what it said, according to Brother Ross Ben. But these are... These, um, this is Saturn here, the area that is on Saturn. This is said to be a gigantic storm that is on Saturn, but this is symbolic to um, the Kaaba, as well as also to these particular images. Matter of fact, if you get on YouTube, you can actually find what looks like a black square that is hovering in the skies um, to this very day. And people don't know what the hell it is. All right, they don't know what it is. But um, of course, the word Saturn, we get the word Saturday, the day of Saturn, all right? And of course, the so-called Jews, uh, Hebrews and Israelites, um, and Samoas all do not uh, deal with anything, uh, particularly on that day. Um, there's no work and you know, so forth and so on. There's fasting in which that is done. All right, so, um, we find out that the signs of the Kaaba uh, symbolizes Saturn. And then, of course, Muslims by the millions travel around this Kaaba seven times. Uh, the Kaaba is 47 feet tall, and for, of course, four plus three is seven. And they kiss uh, this, this stone called the um, Kaaba stone, all right, this black cubic stone. Um, once they go around it seven times um, counterclockwise, then they kiss it. This is symbolic to the pineal gland, going through the seven chakras, so forth and so on. Um, but this is what even the Bible says about this that's going on. Genesis 6, 1. Now it is come to pass that when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters was born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and that they was beautiful. And they took wives from themselves, all whom they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There was giants on the earth in those days, and afterwards, when the Son of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them, and they were the mighty men who were old men of renown. All right? So these are the alleged entities on which that was photographed. Um, with the Hubble telescope on that particular, on that cil um, um, cylinder um, shape ship in Saturn, all right? Really, this is what you really get, all right? When he said that he's seen these men or these people that was more than seven feet tall and they was block, all right? They was known as the sons of God, um, the Bene, Ha Elohim, the angels of God, and they was known as the great old ones. 
All right, this is what the empress wrote, Return of the Ancient Ones. The, it was the great old ones that she was referring to. It was an ongoing theme in the um, Lovecraft um, works. Matter of fact, it is a um, TV series on now called Lovecraft Country. Um, you don't want to see this last episode. Man. You don't want to see this last one. Now, the first four, you can watch. But this last one, you don't want to watch this shit. I guarantee you. Right, that, that shit right there is disturbing, for real. Very disturbing. <laughs> okay. I told truth though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He told some truth, but whoo. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. They, um, you know, it was crazy because you know, right right before Lovecraft, mm -hmm. they had the watchman. You're right. And you know, say I don't want to pull out no spoilers, but we know how that ended. And the woman ended up being, you know, um, you know, a sister ended up being the new being, the new, you know, what I'm saying. So when I look at the Lovecraft, you know, they were dealing with, you know, mystical sciences, Reiki, right. you know, what I'm saying, leukemia. Right. You know, they they right. were, you know, and brothers were having to learn the sciences to defend themselves against the right. Avatar. So right. the themes right. were just like. You wait to now to throw that to our people. Like our people are watching this and they're going, right. huh? You're going from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right, right. Racism, right. the history of the, the the separation of our people, now to say that we're born with something higher in us and we need to tap into that art in order to manifest healing and safety for our people. So the themes in that are just I mean, it's everything you preaching right now. So I just wanted to put that out there for people who may have not had seen the Lovecraft Country or, you know, the Watchmen. Those Watchmen. are two things you must watch because right. this is the first time in history True. those type of characters are depicted by people who look like us. I've never and, seen that before. And Jordan Pill, who who is from um um, um Key and Pill, um comedy, he's the one who did Get Out and did um. Um, clones, the, um, the movie about the clones. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but he also is the producer in, in the Lovecraft. Um, and um, obviously he's been watching Bobby Hammett, you know, because he got a lot of the information that I know that came from Bobby Hammett, you know, in this um, series, you know, um, as Bobby is the first to really break down Lovecraft works and information back in the early to mid nineties. Oh, you know, um, you know, so I'm just simply carrying on the tradition of trying to explain what was really going on with it. So this is what we find here is that um, an ongoing theme with Lovecraft work is completely irrelevance of mankind in the face of the cosmic horrors that apparently exist in the universe. With Lovecraft constantly referring to the great old ones, a loose pantheon of ancient powerful deities from space who once ruled the earth, and who has since fallen into a deep like sleep. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, well, well. Well, it's now time to wake up, niggas. <laughs> okay, that's just simply what it is. All right, no more damn sleep, Van Winkle. All right, 25 years he slept. All right, that is symbolic. All right, your 25 years is up. It's all right here. Return of the Ancient Ones, the Moorish Naga, the Dragon Rider, a Reel of Fire, Generator Operator. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I got taken away for a moment. That's that's my Naga days. <laughs> what a group that, man. <laughs> all right, so right here. All right, so right here, that correlates to the Titans. When you read in Greek mythology, the Titans was known as the Elder Gods. Hence the great old ones. So the mighty titans were a powerful race that once ruled the world before Olympian. In the time of the golden age of men, they were immortal giants. Giants. Remember, we just read about the Bible where it says about the giants that these beings came and and sexed the women and produced these giants on the planet Earth. These were the titans, the great old ones. All right. And it says, in the time of the golden age of men, they was 
immortal giants of incredible strength and knowledge of the old religion, ritual, and magic. It was also known as the Elder Gods, and their dwelling place was at Mount um, Othrys. In Greek culture, they were interpreted as personifications of the earth Gaia and the sky or heavens Uranus. The first generation of Titans was was um, descendants of Gaia and Uranus, who was originally gave birth to 12 Titans, six males and six females. The males were um, Coas, Kronos, um, Crius, Hyboria, uh, Iapetus, and Oceanus. And females were uh, Nemosine, Phoebe, Rhea, Thea, uh, Themis and Tieth. They arose to power when Kronos, in a plot with his mother and father, castrated his father Uranus and took the rulership of Cosmos from him. More details about this conflict can be found in Genesis. <laughs> Two things I want to say to you, God, on that one. Yeah. Grew up watching Captain Planet and uh -oh. Six Rings with different elements. Yep. created, you know, a, a, a union with the earth spirit Gaia. Right. And created a being a who being. transcended, you know what I'm saying, all limitations. Exactly. The immortal um, gods. The, the giants. And then when you look at, you know, Greek mythology, which I was heavy in back in college, man, you know, um, it's funny because Kronos is Zeus's father. That's right. And Kronos um, was actually patricide, just ran in that, that family line because Zeus actually killed Kronos, Kronos to become the god. Right, and Kronos symbolizes Father Time, also Saturn. I'm gonna Kronos. let you get back to it. It's, it's just, you know what I'm saying, the dots. Is All just, line up. Right. All right. line up. Right, Kronos symbolizes Saturn, mm. who is known as Father Time because Saturn in astrology symbolizes white, time, structure, Discipline. Organizational skills, yeah. Skills, right. So that symbolizes Saturn. So that's why they showed you Uranus was the father of Saturn, which is Kronos. <laughs> mm. 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 All right. So this is what they're showing you. So now we get down to Mars, who is Aries, right? And who's Aries? God of War. God of War. Right. Um, was Ares the son of someone? Who was the Ares the son of? Son of Zeus. Exactly. So now we get to from Saturn, who, sh who the white man, the pale man, he said, uh, uh, Bertram, Dr. Bertram, he said that there was black people on Saturn, in Saturn. Now we get to the so-called black people on Mars. Now remember, there was seven um, Only Belash Muhammad said there was life on seven planets. So I'm simply showing you the seven planets that he's talking about. Right? So here we have water gushing um, on Mars. Um, there's ice caps that they finally found on Mars, which they act like they never seen before, but all of a sudden there's ice caps in the mid 90s in which that they found on Mars. We know that there was faces on Mars. Pyramids on Mars, um, structures on Mars, as well as also we find the same type of structures similarly on the moon. All right. Um, according to Yoga Shurananda, he says ascension is achievable when you unify through the heart center all your chakras into one and balance the threefoldment or the threefold flame within your heart where God is through the universal omni macabre of love of multi or multiple light bodies activation. So we know that's the real way of lighting up your body. I got his book. I got, oh, his, got book. Okay. I got his book sitting on my uh, bovida right next to my shrine, right? Okay. And I remember what attracted me to it. It was just, you know, I read inside the book when it first opened up, it talked about after him passing, his body not decaying. Right. 
like his his energy had ascended to such a level that his body didn't cave for like four days. Right. Like he was encased in aura when he passed. Like it was, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 like if you don't, Transcendental Meditation is the name of the book. Just to right. put that out there, you know what I'm saying? I ain't mean to cut you off, God, but it's it's crazy you just, you connecting all these dots right now, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, bro. And so you can get this book, Man-Made UFOs from 1944 to 1994, 50 Years of Suppression, which becomes the re-up known as Man-Made UFOs, the World War II Secret Legacy. Those two books shows in there that the Nazis, once the Nazis were allegedly defeated, we know that the Nazis came into the United States and got protection and asylum, and had to work with the United States government in which that they formed NASA, whose symbol is the, um, the double-tongued serpent, <laughs> all right? And also to form the CIA, all right? Gathering of information as well as also destruction of, of, um, of anyone who does not want to um, correlate to their, their governmental policies They'll kill and destroy, just like they did um, Saddam, just like they did um, Hugo Chavez, just like they did um, Omar Gaddafi. These are just some names. We can keep on with the names. Nkrumah, um, I, right, Shea Rivera. I can go on and on and on with the names, all right? Um, so anybody who do not want to participate with the New World Order, and the way that they see things, they would try to kill off the, and this is the CIA, and this is who the CIA is, was founded in the 19, late 1940s, early 1950s, was through the Nazis, All right? Matter of fact, NASA, NASA and Nazis, same word, All right? But anyway, it says, we have things in the Nevada desert, I'm talking about the military base, Area 51, that you, of course we have, um, um, the military base of um, Dallas, right? That has some of the same stuff. That's you know, that's levels of 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 secret information, levels, all right, underground of information. And it says that you and the best minds in the world won't even be able to conceive that we have for thirty to forty years, and you won't be made public for another fifty years. This is um, Ben Rich, former head of um, engineer from Kelly Johnson at Lockheed um, and um, Skunk Works. And it says, after the Nazis reinvented flying, uh, hold up, reinvented flying saucers, all of the sudden people worldwide started seeing them. Yes, I believe most of these sightings are US aircraft, but I also believe that there is an entire ancient or alien civilization living inside this planet with bases underground and caverns and in the deepest part of our ocean. Most of the UFOs are military, but they copy the tech from those great beings. But those who know, know. Have you ever read David Hatcher Chowdhury's Man-Made UFO or um, uh, William Cooper's book, Behold a Pale Horse? All right, so this is the book they're talking about, Urban Classic. The mid-1990s, uh, mid, um, early 1990s, early 90s, the mid 1990s, if you didn't have this book, that was one of the first joints right there. Right, right. If you didn't have this book, then you know what you ain't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. <laughs> yo, you your conscious card got drafted. Yo, you was yeah, no way. Right, right, right. It got thrown away. Don't don't even wait. You in this conversation? Sign, please go over there. <laughs> you know, that's how it was. All right. So um, so we know that there's fake UFOs that was designed by um, the U.S. government, we also know that they have Project Blue Bean. So the last result, all right, will be them faking a UFO invasion. This is what is coming up, all right? Mark my words, this is already coming up. The other day in Jersey. All right, right. In New Jersey, they just so I, I was just about to say, yeah, did you see that shit? Right, right, right. The way they was panning the camera, I was like, damn, this might be... Like, I, and then you see everybody else taping it. That's what's had me like, whoa, okay. Right, right. So, so hold on, I missed that Jersey joint. Please break that down real quick. Yeah, um, everybody um, that was in New Jersey, um, uh, well, a lot of people, I guess, that was in the area of, um, 
I can't remember the area of New Jersey that it was in right now, but you can pull it up on um, YouTube. Um, there was hundreds of people taking footage of this craft that was in the sky. Um, and of course, this was very believable UFO. But remember, we just finished reading that they've been making UFOs for the last 80 years. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, um, they claiming that it was the Goodyear blimp. This yeah. is what they're claiming. They had a beaten wife. Right. Like a, I believe it was something like a blimp or right. one of the right. crafts because you got a, mm -hmm. a flash. It was light. a flashing light on yeah. it. So they so they were saying that um, if you look at the news now, they saying that it was the Goodyear blimp. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen a Goodyear blimp in a minute, but yeah. <laughs> you know. That was actually a UFO fly. Cause it's a beacon light at the top. Right, the right. Wow. But, but you know, you can you can pull it up. But this is what is going on. Um, trick knowledge at its best, or um, evasive techniques in which that um, eventually will lead to us having an actual um, fake um, invasion. And we know this is coming. Um, Jesse Ventura told us this already on his conspiracy theory um, TV show. Shit. 15 years ago, okay, uh, right after he was governor of uh, Minnesota. So this is an actual governor, former wrestler, telling us that UFO invasion is coming and um, we best to get prepared for it. All right, so this is the next thing that they had coming up um, because this, this um, shit with this corona shit ain't working. Um, you know, this shit with... Uh, having, you know, this civil unrest, you know, uh, this so-called race war, this shit ain't working, all right? None of this is working. The only way they're going to be able to um, um, bring things together is through this invasion, and this is the plan, because no, uh, we following Minister Farrakhan. We ain't taking no goddamn vaccination. No doubt. Yo, and then you know what? You notice how people was like... Uh... People starting to say, like, just randomly, even people that may not even be in conscious, they, they start saying, oh, well, we might as well, like, all this shit we've been through this year, we might as well just, the aliens might as well just come on out now. Remember people was making jokes about it? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. that's that's ill. That might be some shit they got up they motherfucking sleep for real. Oh, yeah. yeah and, I mean, it'll it, it throw, it throw motherfuckers all the way off. Right, right. Project right. Blue Team. Yeah. It's right here. It says Project Blue Bean has been reported as a secret government conspiracy to concede, to convince the masses slowly over time through conditioning that aliens are real and are visiting our planet. All right. Jesse Ventura, latest Area 51 conspiracy demonstrates UFOs has been and are being used to manipulate the public. Holograms are being used to test the public's vulnerabilities and to manufacture beliefs in aliens. The I Am um, Mountain Report of 1963 discusses these possibilities in order to transition from a wartime economics to a peacetime economics or economy, excuse me, while keeping the masses under subjection and manufacturing a common enemy. All right, so yeah, they, this is their plans. All right, here it is, Project Blue Beam. And as you see, they go to beam, and they were, it's the mystery in the sky. Strange blue lights raises questions. Look at it. Uh-oh, here go a UFO craft once again. Uh-oh, but this look like it's made from metal and got lights around it. Now, here go a disc in which that a matter of fact, this is a similar disc in which that was that my wife's my wife and I seen over a house back actually late last year. And right after we seen it, like about I think it was about maybe eight, seven to eight jets came flying. I mean, I mean fast and hard, like they had an agenda. So whatever this that was over the house, obviously was not one of theirs, because they was pilling. I mean, 
I mean, the sky was damn near. I mean, it was ripping the sky. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, I, shoot, they, it was like almost um, sound of speed that they was on um, flying at. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, they was trying to get at it. And we saw the actual craft over top of a, um, over a house as we was coming home. My wife said, do you see that? And I looked out the peripheral of my vision and I said, yeah. You know, and she was like, that's a craft, UFO. You know what I'm saying? And then as soon as we got down the road a little bit further, going towards her mom and dad house, them jets came out, about eight of them. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I was like, oh, I was like, damn, hold up. We never seen that many jets come at one time, especially not at nighttime. All right, normally we might see two jets come, maybe three, that's it, but not eight. Not eight. Okay. Yeah, right 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 you know, we never seen that before. So um, in 19, no, in 2003, um, I went to Atlanta, Georgia with my teacher. And matter of fact, I lectured, I lectured down there. Matter of fact, it might be even earlier than that in 2003. But um, this was given to me by a brother named Jeremiah. And he gave me this writing. This is Elian writing. All right. And he told me that when I'm ready, I'll be able to decode this writing. All right. And he told me, he said, they told me to give this to you. I'm like, they told me to give it to me. Oh, shit. Okay. Now, that might be because when I was nine years old, I actually had a craft hover over top of my head that was about maybe no more than 150, 100 yards to 150 yards over top of my head. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that could have been the reason why. But he gave me this and the craft. Speak your very, truth, God. Speak your truth. Yeah, and the craft looked very similar to this right here. And I was nine years, I was living in Brooklyn in Coney Island at the time. And I was walking back from the, um, walking back from the store um, getting some, you know, bread, eggs and stuff, you know, breakfast food. Um, my mom, you know, let me go out and go, you know, do a little shopping, you know, a little thing. I was nine years old. So, I mean, we was grown as nine years old um, in those days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were doing all types of shit that we shouldn't have had no business doing. I like drinking beer and all types of shit. But that's another story. <laughs> but, but I didn't drink no beer this day. All right, I'm walking back from the store, walking home, and this craft hovered over top of my head about 100 to 150 yard, um, yards over top of my head to the right of me. And it looked similar to this type of shit right here with the lights going in and out around it. And it actually was in the colors of the, um, of the chakras. All right, and so when Jeremy gave me this, and I never met Jeremy, before the day that he gave me this information. But he said, they told me to give this to you. Okay, never met him before. All right, so um, that was just something in which that, you know, was wild. So they're all real crafts, they're all man-made crafts. And then of course, um, the government also have Project Blue Beam in which they, they were used, but the real crafts is what we're talking about. Transform your body into a light ship. All right, Dr. York gave us this information back in the late 80s. He said, imagine yourself as a pebble being dropped into a pond and the ripples of the splashing radiating outward on from you in a greater circle. This method expands the auric field into a disc, all right, shape. It resembles a galaxy observed sideways. Now imagine yourself in space being dropped into an etheric sea and at the speed of thought, 24 billion miles per second or 24 frames a second, the vibrations of such a drop sends forth trembling of cosmic waves that ripples the universe. Begin humming, all right? A buzzing noise like a hummingbird, bee, drone, a bumble, a fly, mosquito, gnat. And then tune all lights inward, making them home come outside of the body to inside of the body. And this is done until you feel the whole body vibrate, emanating the eight auric and chakra points or nodes. 
All right, so this is in the Science of Healing by Dr. York, who's known at the time as Imam Isa al Hati al Um, And so this is what we see that is going on. Um, these, these are real sciences. And how you want to bring that energy in. A matter of fact, um, Nikola Tesla told us, he says, and this energy emanates from one single source, a single center, and that single source is the sun. The sun is the spring that drives all. The sun maintains all life and supplies all human energy. All right? So what is it from the sun that we get? We get the hormone known as vitamin D. It's called the sunshine hormone, vitamin D. All right, so this light comes, we do what is called photosynthesis. Um, we eat sunlight for energy, all right? If your body is too acidic and the mind is too sick, all right, the sun will cause disease, all right, such as melanomas, carcinomas, etc. However, if your body is not acidic and is alkaline, electrical, and your mind is right, all right, what happens is when the sun peaks with the solar flares, super flares, mega flares activity, then you can absorb the rays of the sun and it will fill in your um, melanin because at the third dimension, your melanin has a energy gap. At the fourth dimension, which is ultraviolet light, which is coming from the sun, it fills in that gaps in your melanin and your melanin become uh, transformed from a semiconductor to a superconductor of electromagnetic energy known as photonic energy. So devolution is not the same as evolving. And over acidity is, de um, is degenerating yourself. Be light, be alkaline, all right? So the physicist, Dr. Pop, he wrote and declared that the human organism is not only a carnivorous or vegetable or vegetarian being, but also a consumer of light. In fact, it behaves like a lumivarious creature. So if people don't believe that we can um, become um, light, then all the sciences point towards that, whether it's quantum physics, whether it's uh, physics, by um, 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 biophysics, astrophysics. It says here, um, there is a greater source of light entering our solar system through the zodiac door of the Leo, of the lion Leo, called Sekhmat. This energy is altering our DNA. All right, just like the energy from Betelgeuse is altering our DNA. The supreme light is black light, ultraviolet radiation. This super color will allow us to connect to a higher orbital level. There are seven energy states of the electron. The violet end of the spectrum is the highest energy state of the electron in terms of the visible spectrum. This higher color will raise the atomic structure of our physical body by causing us all of the electrons in the body to jump, make a quantum leap at once, breaking the seven seals or the seven shells of the electron. All right, this is biblical, all right? And what's helping us is not just the sun itself, but also the sun behind the sun. We said earlier that our sun works off of the energy of Sirius also, all right? Sirius hits Saturn, but it also hits our sun. So right here, Journal of Biological Physics, Stillwater, Oklahoma, USA, 1989, state scientists have found out a stream of energy from stars traveling in Pacific directions, either in, um, either up or down the galactic arm in which they are embedded. Stars are polarized to other stars, both negative, magnetic, and positive electric, or receiving energy, some sending it out, all of which travels on a path to the magnetic field line. All right, recent findings reveals we are downstream from Sirius in the part of the galactic arm our solar system resides in. New energies are flowing into Earth at an unprecedented degree. 
Sirius transmits its energy, which is high charge photonic light particles to our entire system via the magnetic field line. We literally receive energy from Sirius. Now this is no coincidence because in uh, the Holy Quran, um, chapter 30, um, chapter um, 53, Al Najim, which is the star, it says, and that he, Allah, is the Lord of the Sirius, the mighty star. Okay? That's no coincidence. All right, so um, we know that Sirius um, has the same elliptical pattern as our DNA. Sirius A and Sirius B travel around each other in an elliptical pattern. No coincidence. All right? So Sirius has a very profound effect upon us. Right? Um, and this effect happens to be just like Sirius, the DNA, so is our Kundalini energy is in us in an elliptical pattern. The same way that our DNA spirals the elliptical pattern, same way that Sirius A and Sirius B, which is um, um, Polo, um, Potolo and Zigitolo, um, travel around each other, Sirius A and Sirius B, all right? The San Bushmen believe in a universal life force which emanates the human body, and they call it Noom energy. Noom energy. Now, this is the nomo that the Dogon speaks of. This is something internal, not just an external way it speaks about what well, the um, nomo looks like dolphins and part human, part dolphin, part human. We call it the mermans, the mermaids, but this is also symbolic to the sea man. All right, which is your semen, which is talking about your sexual energy, which is also referring to the fact of your kundalini power. And so this is what it says. The sand people ties offerings for animal spirits to the trees and use drums in order to connect, contact animals and ancestor spirits. The drumming and the dancing increases the force of the noom energy. The drums vibrates, um, um, activates the noom energy in the bodies of the sand healers. The healers aren't just curing physical healing um, illnesses using noom energy, their dancing and drumming expels what they call star sickness. This star sickness is a force which can take over an entire tribe and cause jealousy, anger, and quarrels. These things are thought to be pull people apart and damage unity. All right? Shit, this is what all niggas need. You know, niggas got a problem with unity, so shoot, we need to be damned on the noom dance. All right, we need a noon dance going on, pulling out that damn star sickness. <laughs> okay, that's what we need. All right, so right here, I'm working the snake power. This is what um, um, Credo Moutois says. He says, my grandfather also taught me how to control my power of seeing and how to sharpen them and make them more accurate and efficient. He taught me the art of breathing properly. He taught me the secrets of art of joining my mind to that of the great gods in the unseen world. He taught me how to sit still, very, very still, and emanates all thoughts from my mind and call upon the hidden powers of my soul. In short, my grandfather taught me the Zulu version of what is called an English meditation. How to breathe softly and gently like a whisper until you feel something like a hot coral snake bursting through the top of your head and a fearsome thing that is known as umbalini. This umbalini, same word as kundal, um, kundalini. And the grandfather told me it is the source, the primal source of the um, Sangoma powers. And the Sangoma must be able to summon this kundalini or umbalini at will through the beating of the drum and through meditation and very, very deep meditation. So the same energy that the sand people have um, that they call Noom energy is the same as in South Africa called the Umbalini energy. And I'm saying all this because this is what happens when you activate it, you can form your body into a star ship. All right. Um, right here, Umbalini is a primal force used by the Zulu shaman to connect their minds and deities in the spirit realm. Describe something like a hot coral snake bursting through the top of your head. Um, as we said, Umbalini is a primal force right here. Um, it's the state of chief through sitting still, deep breathing, eliminating the thoughts, and drawing up the power of the soul. All right? Um, this is the same thing that we see here. The upper dantian controls the transformation of the shin to wu chi. 
um, middle dantian controls the transmission to qi to shen, and the lower dantian controls the transformation of jin to qi. All right, these are the three areas that you are known as the three minds or into one mind at the lower dantian and keep on spiraling and expanding the awareness of the primal force. And you see here charged by the universe, the dantian um, acts as batteries, your, your, um, uh, uh, your melanin is actually a battery, all right? Um, we know that you are a star. Right here, it says the divine spark, which is written, uh, editor is Graham Hancock, in which that it says right here, by weight, 93% of the matter in your body was born in the body of a star. We know that star turns matter into the energy of light, agents of the electromagnetic force. Light forms us in the world around us and brings this energy. Light is the catalyst in photosynthesis on land and in the world's ocean, where water molecules and carbon dioxide from the air are rearranged into the basic building blocks of the entire vegetable world. During this process, the energy of sun light is stored in plants and their seeds, transferring to us what we eat those basic foods and other animals that ate them. This is energy that powers life and consciousness. We are made of stardust and powered by starlight. This much we know, all right? So you are a living star, all right? Um, every nigga is a star, all right? That's a song, all right? You can check it out on YouTube, all right? Right here, right here. The difference between humans and fireflies is that 90%, which is bioluminance of heat, escapes from the top of the head of the human, while in the firefly, the 90% is contained as heat, which is transferred into light of the body, and only 10% of the heat escapes the body. So what is escaping is called luciferous, is a generic term for the class of oxidative enzymes that produce bioluminance and is distinct from a photon protein. Photon proteins are a type of enzymes made of protein from bioluminous organisms. They add to the function of the luciferins, which usually light producing reflect, react, reaction in cataclysm, on catalyst by the enzyme luciferous. The name is derived from Lucifer, the root of the word meaning light bearer. All right, one example is the firefly, in fact, the firefly luciferin is the luciferin or light emitting compound found in many firefly species. It is the substrate of luciferous, which is responsible for the characteristics of yellow light emissions from many firefly species. Luciferin is the same substance that allows other luminous deep sea fish and microbes to light up over 2,000 species. Well, you are one of them too. Remember, we read earlier that you are a um, luminous, a luminivarious creature. Dr. Pop said that we are luminivarious creatures. All right, so this Kutalini comes up, either Pingala, Shoshuna, it comes up into the top of the head as Okrita Matois talked about into the crown and produces a halo. All right, this halo, and here it is. This is the development of the golden dragon body as you see here to the left. And you see what looks like a dragon coming up over top of the head, that is the halo, all right? Dr. Frank Bard theory says matter is shaped and structured by light. These molecular mole uh, melanin combinations eat light in order to maintain, expand, and evolve matter. The more highly evolved a species, the more complex is biological capacity to use light, all right? So that's powerful right there, all right? So right here is you, uh, once you are totally become a light being, as you start here to the left, develop the golden dragon body, all right? As you came into this world, you had light in the aura around your head as the sperm, whether male or female. You see the firefly, as you see here, the lightning bug um, with the light. And here you are, um, once you master it, you light up the whole body, all right? And you can also, um, uh, form into a ship, as we said earlier. So this is called the Kan San, the golden dragon body of the Kulun Nigang system, all right? Um, basically, they talk about it. This is Tibetan golden dragon body, similar to the Tibetan returnable 
uh, rainbow body and the diamond body. All right? This is what you want. So in order to obtain a rainbow body, one has to liberate their body um, into light by only having loving thoughts. The monk said the secret to this state is to only have loving thoughts for 13 to 60 years. All right? So, so we can become a star while these people on earth trying to emulate and they call the, the entertainers and celebrity stars. <laughs> but yet not teaching real information about how to become a star. All right? Um, right here, according to Black um, Blackout the Whitewash, um, Dr. Suzar, it says humanity first prototype began as a long-lived godlike ethereal hermaphroditic being that gradually polarized into opposite sexes, or what is called com um, comparable um, sexes, um, male and female, and solidified into flesh, right, form. All right, so this is how this looks. It's called a morphogenic process in low energy electromagnetic field. And um, they took a drop of blood from a pregnant woman, and it actually showed within the drop of blood um, the seed in which that she was carrying coming into formation. All right. Um, so all of this um, shows how um, these particular things take place. All right. And so we eventually we get to planet Earth. All right. So remember. These stars are minds of our ancestors. Well, if you can transform your body into a vehicle of light, then that means you become pure mind. Right? So that means that you, and it also said the rainbow body is returnable. So you can return, you can dematerialize and rematerialize at will. Right? That's the key. That's what we want to get to. All right. Therefore, there is no death. All right. Get the book, What They Never Told You in History class. And it breaks down um, how we were the first. Oh, yeah. Classic. Another urban classic. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the Bible, it tells you about male and female created he, them, and blessed them and called their name Adam. Adam as in Atom. All right, Adam as in A-T-O-M, all right, in which that it shows you that is actually symbolic to the mitochondrial DNA in which that brought forth life upon planet Earth through the four amino acids, all right, through our genetics, genes. And it shows you in ancient Egypt, Kanum, which is the same word as Noom, Kanum and Noom, one and the same, the same that the um the San Bushman speaks about, the cut um the Noom energy is the same as the Kanum energy that the Egyptian speaks about, in which they have formed man and female. And this is the sexual energy force in which they have formed man and, and female, male and female in the womb. And this is um Kakat um uh I'm um, here, I had Heru, who is now giving forth the symbol of life, which is the source of life, the key of life, which is the Ankh symbol, to the two um, creatures, which is the Ka and the Ba, symbolic to Adam and Eve, the spirit and soul, um, which is being created in the, in the, the this is the Ka Ba signs on which that you find within Islam, but it's forming the body on the will. All right, the potter's will. The Bible speaks about Adam and Eve being formed on a potter's will by God. This is in the Sumerian text. The Sumerian text shows the same thing of, of, um, of Adam and Eve being formed um, in a, um, on a potter's will, um, you know, symbolically. All of this is symbolic. All right. Here it is. Um, Isaiah 64, 8. But now, oh God, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. And all of us are the work of the, your hands. Isaiah 41, 
25. I have aroused one from the north, and he has come from the rising of the sun. He is called on my, name, on my name, and he has come upon rulers, upon mortar, even as the potters tread clay. Right? This is why the potter's house um, is the name in which that is given in Texas by, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 Jakes. yeah, T.D. Jakes, uh, T.D. Snakes, right. but anyway, that's another story. Um, in the Quran, in the Quran, 114, um, uh, actually is um, Surah 15, Ayat 28, it says that when you, Muhammad, sustain Allah, said to the angelic being, surely I, Allah, will create a mortal being, Adam, from black clay, from black mud, excuse me, clay, shaped and fashioned. Man's body was formed by an angelic being, Azrael, of black mud. So Adam's body was created black. All right. Um, so even the Quran tells you that potters will. And of course, even Newsweek has to reveal the truth that the oldest people on planet Earth, their search for Adam and Eve, and they show on the cover, the, um, said black man and black woman. And of course, you know, they had to give them jerry curls and shit even though we was not even rocking Jerry Curls by this damn time. Um, <laughs> we ain't right? no activated back then, Chief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wasn't rocking, right. We wasn't rocking Jerry Curls <laughs> this time period. I'm sorry. All right. Um, you know, we might have some PZ, you know, PZQs. They got, but, they, got, they, got Billy, they got Billy Ocean and Tracy Ellis Ross, you know what I'm saying, on the front yeah, cover of Newsweek. On, <laughs> on the front cover. Right, right. They was getting there. They was getting there. <laughs> All right, they was getting in there, but um, they show that we was already upon planet Earth, and so you get this book, The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Cremo and Richard L. Thompson. He says, humans have been walking the Earth for hundreds of millions of years. Now, this is the exact same thing in which that Elijah Muhammad said in the beginning. All right, so this is actually verifying what Elijah Muhammad said, who had allegedly a third grade education. Over the past 200 years, the scientific establishment has selectively ignored, suppressed, and forgotten some remarkable artifacts and bones that contradict the dominant view of human origin and iniquity. Evolutionary um, prejudices have served as a sort of informational filtering system that has left us with a radically incomplete set of facts from building our ideas about human origin. The hidden history of the human race is a call for change in today's arbitrarily rigid mindset, deploying an unexpectedly um, great number of convincing facts, deeply um, illuminated with critical analysis. Readers will find themselves compelled to rethink our understanding of human origin, identity, and destiny. So I'm going to go into it and going to break it out the way. And here it is, the forbidden. Um, Archaeology, uh, also by Michael Cremo and Richard L. Thompson. They speak about um, in South Africa, in Transville, South Africa, that there was a um, um, miners found hundreds of metallic spheres that was well underground, you know, and they said that uh, it dated back to 2.8 billion years ago. 2.8 billion years ago. This is more than half the age of the Earth, which is only 4.5 billion years ago, allegedly, and at 2.8 billion years ago, allegedly, there was nothing on planet Earth. But yet, here we are making and smoking metals 2.8 billion years ago. The spheres are not natural objects and their origin is unknown. They obviously was created by intelligent beings. Well, here they are. It's called the clip drop spheres, dating back to 2.8 billion years old. We also find two billion year old history in Africa with 16 nuclear reactors found in the 1970s, dating back to 2.8 to 2 billion years ago, right? Here we have 600 million years ago, a um, bell-shaped metallic vessel that was blown off the rocks in Dorchester, Massachusetts, in Meaton Hill Rock, dating over 600 million years ago. Right, metal workers, exquisite carving. We have this hammer, hammer that's formed 400 million years ago. All right, over 400 million years ago. Matter of fact, they said that it, it dates back to 500 million years, and it says that it, that this hammer is 96% iron. 
which is far more pure than anything in nature could have achieved without assistance from relatively moderate smoking methods. In other words, they didn't even have anything today that can smoke 96% iron. So you know, they, uh, what, what the hell are they doing? Is that the carbon, that's the carbon dating, te that's the carbon testing um, yeah. technology that, that, that's what they're doing to it? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. They carbon dating the rocks and um, to where these items are found and they said, hold up, this rock is, these rocks are shit. Right. This, what they're finding is billions of years old. What, hundreds of millions of years old. What is going on? Crazy. So, so here we have the ancient trachlobite, trachlobite who stepped on by a, someone wearing shoes hundreds of millions of years ago. All right? Here it is. It's in Antelope um, Spring, Utah. All right? Oh. It says approximately 440 million years ago. With shoes, wearing shoes. <laughs> right now, all of this is before the Earth became known as Pan um, when it was just Pangea, before the Earth separated through what is called the continental drift. It was all before this. Right, so this is when all of the so-called seven continents were together as one called Pangea, or landmass. Here it is, man-made artifacts found in 300 million year old sandstone. This is Texas Fossil Museum collected with evolutionary theories seeks to bury. They seek to bury this information, but this is the curator, Joe Taylor, all right? And basically, what did he do? He said, this is sandstone that's over six, over 300 million years ago. He says the mold of serious depressions left by four strange objects that left behind impressions in hard Pennsylvania sandstone, a layer of strata said to be 300 million years old, right? 300 million years old, all right? So this right here is showing, um, this, is, this is a bell, all right? It says in 1944, a 10-year-old boy, Newton Anderson, dropped a lump of coal in his basement and it broke in half and hit the floor. And what was discovered inside defies the explanation based upon current scientific orthodoxy. Inside the coal was a hand-crafted bronze, a brass aloe bell with a iron clapper and sculptured handle. All right, this is it right here. And it dated back over 300 million years ago. Once again, this is a 290 million year old human footprint. <laughs> so when people say that, uh, Christians say that we only been on planet Earth 6,000 years, when scientists say that, um, you know, Zachariah sent you to them, oh, well, you know, the extraterrestrials came and produced Homo sapiens sapiens um, around 300, thousand um 300,000 years ago to 450,000 years ago somewhere in between that time period uh this is millions and billions of years ago that man was already on planet earth so see they playing with this shit the rock which belongs to premium period 299 to 251 million years ago was discovered in new mexico and featured a human footprint left behind apparently nearly 299 million years ago. But there, was, but there weren't any humans on Earth at that time, were there? <laughs> this is all before the continental drift occurred, which only occurred around 225 million to 200 million years ago. Everything I just told you was evidence of us already being on planet Earth on all continents. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Another human shoe print, which was discovered in 1927, preserved on um, tri um, triastic, uh, triastic limestone dating back 225 million years ago. So right when the continental drift was started to occur, we was already once again had shoes. This all right, this is um, Albert E. Knapp discovered a remarkable preserved heel mark 
made on a Triassic limestone dating 225 million years ago. Can that spot it, the um, fossil among some loose rocks, which he descended a small hill in the Fisher Canyon in um, Persia, it says what, in the Persian County in Nevada. So this is happening now in the Americas. Millions of, hundreds of millions of years ago, way before the Caucasian, which only been on the planet 6,600 years ago. So he can't tell us nothing about our existence. He said, have to reveal these facts that is now being fulfilled, all right? So now we get to the continental drift, the 225 to 250, 200 year where the continental drift started to occur. This is named after the 20th century, a German scientist, Alfred, um, with Jenner, he published a book explaining the, um, the theory that the continental land masses, far from being immovable, were drafting, um, drifting apart um, across the earth. He called the movement of uh, continental drift. All right? So here it is. Same time that this is going on, we find in 1997, there was a case of a 200 million year old shoe print discovered on the Red Mountain in, in China. There was no Chinese on the planet Earth in China at this time, or what they refer to as China, no 200 million years ago. There was only us until recently. With only the last 10,000 years, there was only us on planet Earth and our fathers, as Elijah Muhammad spoke of. But right here, it says the measurement approximately was 10 inches. So we had a 10 inch, um, 10, um, inch, um, what, size 10. <laughs> in St. Louis, Missouri, uh-oh, we find footprints in premium rock 200 million years ago. In Berta, Kentucky, footprints in Pennsylvania rock 200 million years ago. All right, so we seeing a whole lot of action here whole lot of action, you know. Um, so we get the books, The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons of the Great Smithsonian Cover by Richard J. Dewhurst, and The Lost Race of the Giants, The Mysteries of Their Culture, Influence, and Decline Throughout the World. All right, this is by Patrick um, Coroner, right? We know as the giants, Within the biblical standpoint, that was known as the Nephilims, the fallen ones. Well, this is simply saying that we fell from light into flesh. That's it. And um, from infinite consciousness into various other states of consciousness, because you have coming from infinite consciousness, you have magnetic consciousness, super consciousness, subconsciousness, um, life consciousness. Right, you have coming down into inter intrapersonal consciousness, into interpersonal consciousness. Interpersonal consciousness is what most people are at. Me, myself, and I, I got mine, you get yours. Get out of my face, nigga. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's where most of them are at, right? But that's the fall, it's consciousness. From light being, as we showed you, that we are still star beings, and we can be, go back to being star beings, but we have to have a particular method of doing so. Um, that mindset of happiness, wholeness, um, you know, that's what would get us back there. And then, of course, practicing these meditations and raising Kundalini energy can get us back there. All right? Um, because our bodies are 93% stardust energy, and 40,000 to 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily based on if it's solar flare activity, or what is called corona mass ejections, star, um, solar flares, super flares, mega flares, even cosmic flares on which that is taking place now based on Betelgeuse, um, the energies coming from 700 years ago coming to now in this day and time. Hence the reason why they have to disguise all this, um, which is taking place astrologically with um, the corona um, virus, with um, um, being locked down uh, with the hornets coming from China, these giant hornets coming from China with all these things. They had to stop, they had to do all these types of things. All right, so here it is. Um, who was the giants? Well, 33 degree 
C.W. Ledbetter told us who these giants were in the book, The Hidden Life and Freemasonry. He says that the pygmy race is a relic of the old Lemurians and represents them more purely than any other people. The Lemurians were at one time a gigantic people. They was the giants. But in the process of dying out, they diminish in size. All right, that's us. The African Bushmen, also remnants of the same race, but was very mixed blood. And the same thing is true of those who are usually known as the Australian Aborigines, except in their case, there's a very ad light mixture um, of Aryan blood. At other times, the pygmies were spread it out over a great deal more of Africa than at present, as a matter of fact, over the earth. And some of them were the first people to enter Egypt, as we know, because um, some of the shafts is only four and a half feet um, tall. And you have to crawl or scoop down in order to even get into the shafts, all right? Here's the pygmies, how they look, and even in the book, Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West, which that's the book I had, and the guy right here, Arishas, um, um, said, hold up, did you get the guys and the spacemen in the ancient East? I said, oh, no. He said, you know, so hell, I ended up damn getting the whole, the, shit, the whole little collection as I could. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. I was watching the joint, they was talking about how small them shafts was, and then it's like, damn, these little niggas can get, get through that shit. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. Yeah, so here it is, the guys of the ancient West, where, um, where we got this information from. Also, the guys and the spacemen throughout history. You see that one. Yeah, this is by him too, by W. Raymond Drake. And the East one is up here somewhere. I ain't got time to look for it. You know what I'm saying? But it's up here. I got it somewhere. I hope ain't nobody taking the joint. I, I already been saying, you can't just take my damn joint stuff out of here. But anyway, hopefully I got it up there somewhere. Better. All right, so, <laughs> all right, but what he says, he says, pygmies inhabited Earth for at least, this is at least 30 million years. At least 30 million years. Lost race of the giants of 13 million men. Yeah. Went down. All right, so if you don't believe that these people are the first people on planet Earth, signs and symbols of primordial man by Albert Church Ward. And look who the introduction was done by Dr. John Henry Clark. What does the book says? Albert Church Ward in his book, Sign the Symbols of Primordial Man, states that all mankind, Caucasians, Semites, Hamites, and Indo-European Aryans included, originated from the pygmies. Case closed. They, that's who was on planet Earth though millions of years ago and billions of years ago that we just stated. And they weren't in their small form. They was in their gigantic form, as we seen earlier, in which that was told to us in the Hidden Life of Freemasonry. Here it is, Gulf, um, Godfrey Higgins, um, an eclipsius. All right, he says this. Now, I suppose that man was originally a Negro. I suppose that man was, was originally a Negro. I suppose that. <laughs> All right. And what it says, and he traveled westward, where gradually changing from jet black of Indian through all of the immediate shades of Syria, Italy, France, to the fair white and the red of the maid of Holland and Britain. Nah. The fame, here it is, the fame of the Ethiopians was widespread in ancient history. Herodotus described them as the tallest, most beautiful, and long lived of the human race of human races. So there was the tallest, right? And he's described as Ethiopians, right? Right here, the key to culture, right? This is Joseph Mugabe. There's a strong reason to think that man at first was very dark of skin, woolly haired and flat nosed. And as he wandered into different climates, the branches of the race diverge and develop their characteristics, right? Um, here's another book, Before Egypt, the Ma Confederation, Africa's First Civilization. And this is by Dr. Clyde Winters. And he says that the Ma Confederation was the original home of the Egyptians, Mendes, Sumerians, Elamites, and Dravidian speaking people. And I call these people um, Proto-Saharians or Mayatites. 
Amitites, um, they worship Set and Amun, which is Ama. All right. Um, goes on here. The original inhabitants of the Sahara, where the Kemetic civilization originated, was the Sub Sahara Africans or Blacks, not Berbers, but even though the Kushites were called Berbers. So, um, of course, we get that information from the wonderful uh, Ethiopians of the ancient Kushite Empire. If you ain't, if you don't have this book, then you need it. All right. So now we know who these steps was made for. <laughs> All right. Look at these steps. Now you know. Now look. The people that's on these steps look like ants. So we got proof of, of beings being over 36 feet tall. Matter of fact, shoot, we got proof of, of beings being over 100 feet tall. All right? That's another story. But here, we turn to the ancient ones. The empress goes in and she says, we was, we've been here. All right? Matter of fact, this is what she says. She wrote in a book that 85% of the blacks over here in America was already here before the slave trade. Only 15% of blacks came from Africa. We've been here, declared the empress, explaining that the original Native Americans were mostly of dark complexion. She said that the Mongoloid um, Indians of Hollywood fame were minority tribes in the Northwest that was mixed with the blood of Chinese invaders called Yupik. All right? We get some more information in here. The Washita Nation of Moors, and we're going into the Washington because it's historical synopsis, but it explains um, also about the Lemurians. So that the um, part of the um, Kushites or the Lemurians coming from the Pygmies and so forth and so on um, is all connected. And here you have Peru, Mexico, Isabella, now Cuba, USA, um, uh, Canada, and Alaska are European inventions which comprises the lands of the cultured Moors, the descendants from the ancient Amaru nation. The Amaru, um, Washita Moors, the fathers of the civilization began on the great island empire of Mu, the Mori, when about 8,000 years ago, a natural catastrophe overwhelmed this ancient motherland. Some of its survivors made their way to what um, has since been known as North, Central, and South of Mexico, America. All right, in the book, Know who that is? Oh, hey, shake. Hey, yeah, this, 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 this my wife busting up through the door, y'all. All right, she'll be over in a, she'll be over in a second. Here she comes. Here she comes. Yeah, we're still in the conference. We still, we still zooming. We still zooming because we zooming. You know what I'm saying? We still zooming. And um, hold on, hold on. I got to show you somebody you ain't seen in a minute here. Come here. Uh, Who this here? Who this right here? Who they? Please, God, how you doing? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's been years, right? Look at him. He done got grades like I got him. <laughs> oh, wow. Man, y'all still look the same though. That's crazy, yo. I'm jealous. Like, I'm, I need to get, I need to get some work done. It's been almost twenty years. It's been almost twenty years. Y'all look the same. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Blessings. Yes, I, I had to show you. I had to show you, God. <laughs> I appreciate it. My baby come busting up in here, so I had to show, had to. Man, y'all look exactly the. Never mind. That's crazy, man. Y'all look exactly the same as y'all did twenty years ago. That's crazy. That's good living. No doubt. But you know, shoot, we done got this doing this vegan thing. So shoot, you know, uh, very, 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 very little meat. But um, once in a while, we you know we get it get a get it in once in a while but you know it's it's not very much all right so right here in the book of the dead um it says right here by ea wallace budge he tell you who the washita are he used the word washita or washet of course which is a form of head head rule or hawthor and was identified as the prince of the sky in the north with the sun rose she is either depicted in the form of a woman having upon her head the crown of the north 
and a scepter round which a serpent is twined, or a winged Uraeus wearing the crown of the north. She was the principal goddess in the town of Butu in the Delta. All right, and the goddess Washet, all right, which is Washeta. You just put an A on it, that's Washeta or Washet, um, which is um, um, serpent headed, serpent headed goddess. All right, so here you have this um, in this book called America, which at one time was 58000 over $58,000. Um, but right here in the book, in the first few pages, you have those in America lifting up the woman, as you see here. And she has a crown on her head, all right? And she has a scepter in her hand, all right? Um, not necessarily a serpent, but it is a, some type of, look like a magic wand or something like that. But this is what this is being shown, that this was even in the Americas, all right? So this is the, the, um, the um, power that the Empress came um, with. Um, of course, anybody can read about it. It's in the First World Order. It's also in Return of the Ancient Ones under the Empress. But we found something very interesting that in the Universal, Webster Universal Dictionary, 1937, it says an Aboriginal or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of European settlers. The following is the original application of the name Maru. Oh, that's what you came to see. Okay. That's it? You need to get it? You need to get another one? You want one, baby? I got enough for both of us. Oh, that's only for both of us? Yeah. Okay. So, right here. Sorry, y'all. My wife just came in. Ain't seen all day, so I got to talk to her. All right, so right here, uh, found giant race in the north. So we just finished saying um, um, that this was in the United States, in America, as we refer to it, because the United States is of America. America is not of the United States. We want to have supremacy um, over the other one. Um, so here, we just finished saying that an American is an aboriginal, right? Copper colored, various copper colored natives. Well, in this article, it says the same thing about the Giants. Let's look at it. Philadelphia, December the 19th, and it says, a strange tale is told by Captain Jensen of a remarkable race of Giants, some of whom visited the Eskimos and Danes at the mining settlement of Ursa, 10 miles from um, Evergat um, Bay, Greenland. These people has never been seen even by the Eskimos. They are copper colored and are seven, eight, and nine feet tall. Mm, mm, mm. That yeah, that's the picture. That's the picture. And, and, and um, this is the color version, y'all. Mm. And as you see, this is a melanated system here in the Americas, and obviously she was over America. It was a matriarch. So the Empress came in the image of the matriarch in which that this is the same thing in which that was already told and shown in the Book of America, which of course, no, no. Oh, was, oh my God, it done went down. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, this is another book. So right here is called Revealing Af um, America's Dark Skin Past, The Columbian Era, volume, which I don't think that'd be, oh, this is volume two, all right? And it's only $9 right here on uh, what's that prime amazon or amazon i got both of them. all right oh the guy got both of them right, i'm getting ready to get uh, both, who, both who, of them. That? Who, who the author on that one g who's the author of that it's, uh, it's, thank it's, you thank you um all right well, oh i know i'm here um it, it's, uh, you you walked here oh okay Oh, this was revealing America's dark, dark skin past, and then it's three of them. All right, please, baby. We beat in about a half an hour. It's not, really all all right, it's not even giving us the name, but we'll, we'll find it. But I'm gonna keep going on. So remember, we just finished seeing that um, that these giants with the same copper colored natives that is found on the American continent by the Europeans, and here go a European saying that he done found these same copper colored people. So hold on right quick. God is giving me chills because the brother who wrote this book is actually my partner. This is, this is my brother right here. We doing some stuff with the UN right now. 
Oh, Yo, there you go. Uh, Red Silver Fox Thunderbird, man. All right, there we go. All Yo, right, that's Thank crazy. You. I, I, we gotta have him on next time. That's crazy. I had no idea he had wrote this. This is his father. His father perfect. actually wrote this. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it's not all. Wow, that's that's crazy. Got you. Yeah. All right, all right. So right here it says these people has never been seen, even by the Eskimos. They now where the Eskimos at? Yeah, the Eskimos are in Alaska, in, allegedly in America, right? Kimberly Norton. Um, Kimberly Norton, um, also, um, and John Ogaby, which the original joint was by um, Ogaby. It's called America, all right? As you see here too, this is another book. Being the latest and most accurate description of the new world, and John Ogilvy breaks it down, all right? But right here, it says, they are copper colored and seven, eight, and even nine feet tall. In features, they resemble the American Indian. Mm. So, hold up, so, so these Negroes, the American Indian Negroes, copper colored, that was seven, eight, nine feet tall, never been seen by the Eskimos, was in, even in Greenland. God damn. <laughs> God, an article just came out today where they're re they're now rediscovering that uh Vikings were not white. Exactly. Blonde hair, blue eyes. They actually exactly. dropped. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They was copper colored, seven, eight, nine feet tall. All right, so we just finished reading that the original name of America is Maru. Now we look up Maru, the teachings of the Patajo Tep, the oldest book in the world, all right, by Asa G. Hilliard, Dr. Asa G. Hilliard the third, who lay member, but also um, part of um forms um um scat um scat not nah, nah, what's the um name of the um organization? Who's that? Um scat. Scat, uh, uh, I can't remember right now. Uh, I'm saying the name, but right here, um, Meru, all right, is the symbol is an owl in the mouth of Ra, which is called Ru. So M is the owl, R is the mouth of Ra, that's the symbol. So you have the word Mir, as in Meru, and it means the guardian, all right, the guardian of. So right here. Go to the name of America. The most illustrious national name of America was therefore sacred to a people written in their pictorial writings by a snake crossing a straight line and called Amaru, as in Amaruka, the great sun. And it says here, the Spanish colonials adopted the native name of America to designate the first settlement on the mainland of the New World. But in those days, the rule of orthography was undefined. And in addition to numbers, num numerous errors in printing, names were spelled in any way which the writer could um, consider more appropriate. And hence, we have America, not only written as Amaruka or Amerigo or America, but Maraca or Moraca. Moraca, Moraca, hold on, Moraca sounds awfully like Morocco. So when Taj told us that Morocco is America, it is said the same thing in the book, the name of America. This is Morocco, 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 all right, where the word Meru stems from. Here is another book, Mere to More, Kemet Until Now, the etymology, phonology, uh, phonology, um, semantics and morphology of the word more. The word more, as you see, mir, mir, overseer, chief officer, where we get amir from. Um, amir within um, Arabic means governor, chief, ruler. It happens that the overseer, governor, chief, seems to be a common usage in the title mir. This term is prefix to others in order to identify the status in the head of a particular industry or post. If we take notice, mere refers to posts such as captain, governor, administrator, 
etc. Mostly when referring to governing live live um live people. However, when governing property, their translation use or overseer, keeper, stewards, etc. Perhaps this is why the esteemed author George G. Um, James, um, G. M. James refers to Moors as the custodians of comedic culture. All right. It's kind of the origins of the word mayor now that I think about it. Like exactly. That's the origin of the word mayor. Exactly. Mayor. Hmm. Meru. Mo exactly. More. All the same word. As a matter of fact, it's in this book right here. The ancient Kushites Empire. In the Chaldean inscriptions, the vernacular name of Ethiopia was what? Meruk. Here it is. It was Meruk, and its maritime enterprise was very distinctive recognized. The civilization brought to Kushites, to Chaldea, must have developed in the first form um, coming cradle of mankind that the Greeks located upon the upper Nile. All right? So this shows that we were a traveling people on the seas, all right? Here's the reason why they say we was Moors. So you come to find out that the empire, remember we just showed you that MR is the symbol of an owl, the guardian. So no coincidence that the symbol of the empire of Tartari is an owl. No coincidence that they worship an owl at the Bohemian Grove. No coincidence that there's an owl on the back, on the on front of your dollar bill in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. No coincidence. Mm -hmm. So right here, Negro race has billions, all right? And it says Kansas City, Missouri, disenfranchise the Negro and send them back to Africa, question mark, absurd, impossible. More than a billion dollars worth of United States real estate, which he owns in his own name in the United States, is not easily to be taken from him. Besides, the Negro is not an African. He is an American. African is a misnomer. So I'm sorry, all you African-Americans. That's a misnomer. <laughs> OK. So why try to send him to a country which is not his own, right? Aboriginal American Indians are Moors and Turks. It says so within this right here from a federal depository of the New York State, the Handbook of North American Indians, page 290. It says it states that among the reputable um, ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indian population, natives are Moors and Turks. Wow. Oh, oh, here go the Turks. These are the ones that Noble Dr. Ali talked about. Who he says are the true chief protectors. Uh oh, the true chief protectors. Uh oh, the Mirs, the Moors of the Islamic creed of Mecca. Here they are. And, you know, Susu Economics, the history of Pan-African trade, commerce, money, and wealth. These blacks found in the Americas, it says the mound builders. They were dark-skinned, woolly-haired blacks who was indigenous, native to North America, and kin to the Omex of South America, the Omex in Washita, Black Californians, Yamases, Kalanami, and other prehistoric or pre-Columbian blacks of the Americas were part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread worldwide over 100,000 years ago. Once again, before the Chinese and before the Caucasian was even on the planet. Get this book, The Sacred Mysteries Among the Mayans and the Kiyachs. What it says, all right? Let's, uh oh, hold on, let's go back. If you don't read or can't afford any other book to get this, get this one. Facts dating back to 11,000 years proving that the Greek, Egyptians, 
Aztecs, and Native Americans were all had the same language and dialect. They were the same people who traveled around the world. So when you read the Algonquin language, that's the same language that they're talking about. All right. Thank All you. Right, so I need that. Yeah. All right, so right here in the Washington Nation of Moors, uh, historical synopsis again, um, it breaks down uh, right here. Um, boom, boom, boom. That we are Algonquin people. Right? It's in the book. Um, he breaks down that with our forefathers were before this land, I would namely Mu a Mexican was a remaining part of Lumori, a Lumora, and was North, Central, and South America. We are that today without a doubt or contradiction, namely Amaru Washator. The name Amaru, which is the same word as Miru, um, is derived from the so-called, um, let me see, from the so-called Arabian Desert, which was once named Halava, um, 20 to 14th century BCE. Right here, um, the mythology of Cam goes all the way back to the Atlanteans, the Egyptians, the Lemurians, and the Moors were all one people from the Moria and Atlantis. Right, this is what is being told to us over and over again in this book right here, Sacred Mysteries Among the Mayans and the Quiche, which is by Augustus Lepongion. He tells us this, and as you see here, uh, he said this, this is in Freemasonry. So obviously he was, he says, the times anterior of the Temple of Solomon. So he's talking about Freemasonry. This is where this shit has been hidden at. So um, right here, Imperial um, Empire, Washington, de Alemania, it says that Washington Nation of Moors or indigenous people of North America, the Washita, um, otherwise known as the Omex, has been originally associated with the Washita. All right, so the Omex were originally associated with the Washita. So they're one and the same people who is called the Choctaw. Accordingly, the Washita has been the primary group of a more general population of indigenous people identified in history as the Amaru, the Moors. Known in the Spanish and the French, the Washita has come to be known to English as the Adena Hawelian people, identified with the Punic Iberian affinity, maintaining an Aleutian um, Carthaginian heritage. And as such, the Washita has been associated with the Eastern Algonquin Native Americans having acquired an ancient Egyptian. So the Algonquins speak ancient Egyptian as well as Punic script and vocabulary. And they have appeared in the um, epigraphic records of North America. And you can also get this information from Barry Fell in his book, America. All right. So this is them trying to eliminate the Tartarians who are called the Berbers or the Barbarians, who is also known as um, the Moors. So when you read about the Roman Catholic Crusades, the Mongolian conquest, the Great Famine of Europe, the Black Plague, the conquest of um, Timidor, um, Hundred Year War, Spanish takeover of South America, French Wars of Religion, King um, Leopold, Conganese, um, Stalin, Lenin, Russian Tartarian expansion, um, um, World War I, and the Spanish flu vaccine, all of that is to get rid of the Tartarians who are the Moors. Right here, I'm seeing that there was an ancient global, why right, we might even, you know, I won't say global because you know that might offend the flat earthers, all right? But we know there was a civilization called the Moorish Empire. That's what we do know. Instead of historical narrative, we have been taught about um, that they built the world's infrastructure. Perhaps the different empires within the empire, Washita, Phoenician, which is the Canaanite, the Tartarian, the Otama, but one unified worldwide civilization. And it was the roots in ancient Mu, Lemuria, and Atlantis. Right now, this is coming from um, um, Michelle Gibson. All right, she went with us last year on um, our trip to Mexico. 
right, to the pyramids. And this is what she wrote, all right? The Washto Moors are an ancient people of North America living in the present day, and recently deceased Washto Empress Verdiasi was received a charter by the United Nations in 1993, recognizing the Washto as the oldest indigenous civilization on Earth. Based on my research, I take very seriously the brief among many researchers that there was a relatively recent worldwide mud flood liquidation event that wiped out this advanced civilization and then there was a subsequent historical reset of the timeline by those responsible for the cataclysm. I do not believe the mud flood resulted from natural causes, right? Some say that it happened from underground um, explosions, all right? But Dr. Bay, break down something for me. It's a mm -hmm. couple of things. I, I, that part of the history is something I've been, um, you know, we, we've been discussing this for 20 years, man. Right, it's right. Mm -hmm. So when you start to, um, and I challenge anybody, anybody to do this, go down to your state archives. Go back, you know, start with the 1700s and go back as far as they let you go back and then look at the tribes that were there and then look at the pictures. Because you will literally go in South Carolina archives and find pictures of so-called Native Americans who are blackish as coal wearing feathers. And some with kilts on. Right. You will see um, the Kofi the Cheeky Empress, one of the biggest water tribes in, in, in America with pearls on her neck, a sister. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I, I mean, I challenge anybody, like, cause a lot of people will hear this information, they'll go, you know, I'm from Africa, just whatever you want to believe, that's cool. But I just challenge you to go down to your state archives, take your family name where you live and where your grandmama and them stay and look at the tribes that were there, you know what I'm saying, in the 1700s and even further back. And then look at what your state classifies as tribe and look at what your state classifies as extinct because South Carolina will clearly tell you that extinct means they are no longer on the land or they just no longer call themselves as such. That's what they say about these so-called indigenous tribes in, in the South. But, you know, I, I, I ain't want to, you know, take nothing from you. I just want to, you know. That's true. The dovetail mm -hmm. is that, man, you know, this is undeniable and disputable, man. A lot of cats, you know, are, will, are going to see this. And, you know, again, the African narrative has just been shoved down your throat so much that a lot of cats just have a hard time understanding that the whole world was Africa at one time. You know what I'm saying? And all people were of the same lineage. Like, it's very hard for people to understand that. So I just wanted to clear that up for people who are going to be like, nah, man, I'm from Africa, man, I can't do this. You know, my people's from the Congo. I'm not claiming to be no Indian. You know, and until you can kind of get past the roadblock in your own mentality, you know what I'm saying, about who you are and what this heritage means. Right. You know, it's very hard for people to dig what you're saying, man. Because, I mean, I, I've talked to several brothers over the years. Yeah. And it was like, you know, they, they were very, very angry. You know what I'm saying? Even some very close brothers to me, very close friends, they were like, they were very angry. You don't want to identify as black. You don't want to identify as African-American. Being black is so hard, niggas want to be Indian. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, that's deep, you know what I'm saying? That you would deny your own heritage for something that a white guy gave you. You know, he gave you that narrative. Right. But um, like you said, wait, but, but you ain't got to take grandma help. Grandma already know. Grandma would have told your ass. Boy, we Cherokee. Stop that damn African shit. Uh, gra grandma told us. Grandma said we ain't never been no damn slave. She ain't never been nasty. no slave. And exactly. my grandmother and my grandmother would never let us use the word Cherokee. She would, it was Anna Yuea. You can't use it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the New Year, Selegi, um, um, Kittawa. Right. Kawa. These are, right. These are the Kawa. five yeah, these are the five names of who they refer to as the Cherokee, which is a French extraction. All right. English transliteration of a French extraction, which is called Selegi. All right, so as the guy said, the original name is Ananuia, which means we the people or the original people. Or if you look at the word principle in Black's Law Dictionary, people of God. You know, principle is actually another word for God. So 
exactly. God's people. Like that's that's God's anyway, people. go ahead. I, I got the science from you, but it's just like, you know, just to see it come full circle, man, 20 years. And it's yeah. even the circle getting tighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dabra, nigga, abracadabra. <laughs> how it go? That's how it go. Abracadabra. Exactly. I'm sitting here, I'm looking up at my great grandma. She, you know, what I'm saying, Hollow. When I right. went, to see, I got, I got to see her one time before she transitioned, and she just had the two braids going to the back, and my grandma was sitting right next to her. You know, and uh, I didn't get to ask her a bunch of stuff because I think I was like in the 10th grade, so. It was a situation where time stopped, and I'm looking at her, and like, damn, if it weren't for her, it weren't for grandma, if it weren't for grandma, it weren't for my pops, it weren't for my pops. I was, I was too busy, I was too young to go into all that, but oh, yeah, no. straight, straight Hollywood Cherokee, just like that. You see what I'm saying? It just be lining up like that. But go ahead, God. Yeah. So, oh yeah, definitely. I ain't got those, but I got that one. Yeah. yeah. But um, right here, if you look up amorality in Black's Law Dictionary, it tells you what's, what's exactly going on. It says, amorality is properly the successor of the consular courts, which was emphatically the course of merchants and seagoing persons. So hold on, now we just finished showing you who was the seagoing person. And damn, seven, eight, nine feet tall, copper colored Native Americans who they call niggas. All right? It said, established in the principle Maritime city on the revival of the commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I got Nation of Islam members, Hebrew Israelites, Rastafarians, everybody damn saying, chump Babylon down, chant Babylon down. This is Babylon. Babylon is getting ready to fall. Western Empire getting ready to fall. Well, hold up. This right here says that the fall already happened. Mm. <laughs> So who fall is this? Well, you go to consular courts, it tells you who fall it was. Courts held by the consular, one country within the territory of another under the authority by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they may have a, also a criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect, were subject to review by the courts of the home government. The last of the United States consular courts is what in parentheses? Morocco. Was, ex was abolished in 1956. In 1956. Now hold on, remember, we told you, so it's the United States of America, Morocco. And that Morocco of the United States, one have the superior position. All right? So right here, it tells you, right in here, the fall of the Western Empire. We are the fall of the Western Empire now, allegedly. So when did it fall? Like I said, the Rastas, Nation Islam, et cetera, is still waiting for Babylon, America to fall, i.e. the United States. So obviously this is not a reference to the United States, but the last Western Empire, the de jure government, prior to this one, de facto government, who stated it is properly the success of the consular court. Interestingly, like I said, I had to look up consular court. And another interesting connection happened, which was in the last sentence of the paragraph, the last of the consular courts was Morocco. Now we showed you earlier about the name Morocco or Maraca, right? We showed you all that, right? Here it is. Hence we have America, not only written as America, Amerigo, America, Maraca, or Moraca. Uh-oh, that's the same as we just finished seeing that they had to put in parentheses and tell the goddamn truth. Mm -hmm. So they told you that America was first, the, which is the United States, the 13 colonies was, was, was the first to be recognized by Morocco. All right, so check this out. This, this, is, this is interesting too, cause right here, in 1956, who did this? This was President Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower. On September the 15th, 1956, it says that the jurors, check this out now, check this out. The United States Code, Title 22, Chapter 2, Section 141, hold up. Khalid, um, where you remember 
seen that number at before. 222-141. Two, 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 one. Could it be double A, 222-141, two, 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 mm. which we found under CM Bay? Wow. And here it is. <laughs> It says the name America is derived from the name Morocco, Al Morocco or Morocco, as we just said, and not from the Italian name Americo Vespusky. America is in part of the dominion of the Moroccan Empire. The Ultima Empire it is called the Songhai Ghanaian Malian Empire, as it's called, is also referred to as the Kushite Empire. One in the same. And it says, see United States Title 22, Chapter 2, Section 141. It was repealed August the 1st, 1956. Repealed Sections 141, 140 to 143, effective as the date that the president determined to be appropriate for the relinquish of jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco. The jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco was relinquished by memorandum of President Eisenhower dated September 15th, 1956. Notice was given to Morocco on October the 6th, 1956. <clears throat> In all pending cases were disposed of by 1960. Department volume 35, 909, page 844, section 141. And it goes through everything and it tells you where this was. It says general authority generally of ministers and consuls of the United States in China, Siam, Turkey, Morocco, Miscat, Abyssinia, which is Ethiopia, Persia, and territories formerly part of the Ottoman Empire, including Egypt. Okay. So oh. we got one left in stock for seven dollars. Okay, they have one left in the stock, the um, uh, wonderful Ethiopians in the ancient Kushite Empire, mm. right, on um, Amazon. But mm. check this out. This, this goes even further because we're going to see something real crazy. So we know that in 1956, when Morocco, the kingdom of Morocco and Africa, gained their uh, freedom from France, then they was able to fly the, fa um, the flag, but it was the five-pointed star intersecting flag, not the overlaying flag that Prophet Noble Drali flew. All right? That flag that Noble Drali flew, which was the overlay flag, which is the five-pointed green star, which symbolizes um, true freedom and justice in the sense of, you know, of that field of red cherry is the governmental Moorish flag. Um, and is this, the, this is the alleged cherry tree that George Washington um, cut down. Well, we come to find out that the real George Washington actually was Adam Weissuff, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati who infiltrated the United States um, Masonic Lodges. This is in Cosmic Trigger, Volume 1 by Robert Anton Wilson. And he cut down the um, cherry tree in 1775. I mean, 1774. All right, so you can get um, Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume 1 and 2 by David Ricci, and he tells you that prior to this, all right, they was assisted, this, this is it, that um, September the 5th, oh, hold on, y'all. Peace. That's on the table? Okay, I'll bring it. Peace. Yes. Um, a just a few more minutes. I'm getting getting ready to wrap it up in a few. All right, peace. All right, we be getting ready for our conference. So people is at the house, and so she like, where you at? All right, but um, <laughs> but right here, um, we hear the story that at age nine, George Washington told his father, "I cannot tell a lie." Father, I chopped down the cherry tree, all right? Really, he was assisted by England, Scotland, Ireland, the Netherlands, France, Germany, Finland, and Sweden, all right? To end the war with the Moors. 
All right, this was just the way that they upserted us and had us to sign the treaty of peace and friendship. Who was the emperor, right? Or the Sultan Muhammad Bey the third, right? This is what is told to us. Now, what they didn't tell us that Muhammad Bey the third was in New York City. <laughs> That's where he was the Sultan. He was in New York City. It was sent to New York City. And guess what? He was in the New Year. <laughs> Cherokee, as they say. This is what we found out. This is the this is the this is the reason why they say that this is the longest standing treaty, unbroken treaty in the history of the United States. It's about with the indigenous people here. This is why you get the speech. Morocco was the first nation to recognize the United States by Obama. He speaks on this. All right. Um, also, here it is. The real George Washington was murdered and replaced by the founder of the Illuminati, Anna Weissoff. And you can see right here, these are the images of who's on the dollar bill in Anna Weissoff how he looked, and who does that look like? Look like the exact same person to me. It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. So, this is the trickery in which that is taking place. So it was Adam Weiss, who's the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, and the reason why the Illuminati, these reptilians are now battling against the gods the Syrians, in order to try to take our place um, upon planet Earth. All right? Yeah. And this is how we look. She go back. Right. Go back, G. I seen her son. That was me, son. Where? Go back. Oh, shit, that's my people, son. Right there. Damn. Then go to that next one. With the green, yeah. Son of Namasak. Go. Nip. All right, niggas. I see y'all. Damn. That's ill, son. So we know that he had to be melanated. The Sultan Muhammad Bey, because this is an image of Muhammad bin Abdullah, um, you know, emperor, sultan um, of Muli. And you know what they used to call this, you fucking Muli. That's what the Italians used to um, call it. You fucking Muli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his name is Muli. I said, sorry. And he was the emperor of Morocco and Fez. All right? So, Mohammed Bey III was related to him, and he was at his quote unquote empire set up in New York. And that's the reason why they call it New York the Empire State. That shit ain't even there. Damn. Nope, it's not there. <laughs> they put the York on the end of. They just, you know what I'm saying? Came through with the with the old York. Well. Damn. You know, it's actually named Manhattan though. Like, you know what I'm saying? York ah. is actually the British. There you go. It was the British Kingdom at the time. So New York, you know, after the British took it over. You know what I'm saying? After the right. Revolutionary War. But uh yeah, it was actually the island of Manhattan was really the air the territory. It was the Manhattan. If you look at gangs in New York, they'll show you the indigenous person standing right there, about seven foot tall, and they'll tell you the original inhabitants mm. right there on the statue. So I mean, you know, it's man, the full circles is uh man, this thing is turning into a spiral now, boy. And the evidence is just getting more and more real. Yeah, right here in the book, The Prehistoric Times by James Anderson, written 1911, says the first inhabitants of Southern Europe, Northern Africa, Arabia, France, and the British Isles was a race of small men who did not average in height more than four to five in the five inches. They were a slight built with dark complexion. In other words, these were the Twa people. In fact, he says they were an African people. At least that's what they refer to him as, because there was a branch of them in Africa. 
Right here. Get the books, The Moorish Empire by Budget Meekin. And the history of the Moorish Empire in Europe by S.P. Scott, author of Through Spain. There's three volumes to this one. These four books explain damn near everything that we're talking about. So whenever you hear the additional names and empires of the Moors is all connected. The Amohed, the Amovid, the Atlanteans, Aztecs, the Carthaginians, the Etruscans, the Hasidian, the Inca, the Iroquois, the Lemurians, the Moabites, the Omex, the Ottomans, the, um, the, um, the Phoenicians, the Powhatan, the Persians, the Prussians, the, Sar um, the Saracens, the Sumerians, the Turks, British Empire, Moorish Empire, Spanish Empire, French Empire, Holy Roman Empire, uh, uh, the Kushite Empire, the Songhai Malian Empire, same empire. This is why they had to delete this information from history. This is an actual CIA document in 1957. And it talks about how they destroyed the Tartarian information history. Right here, it says, for example, on August the 9th, 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party sitting in Moscow issued a directive ordering the parties Tartarian um, providential, um, providential um, committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of the Tartaria to liquidate several um, serious shortcomings and mistakes of the nationalistic character committed by individual writers and historians in the dealing with the Tartarian or the Tartar um, um, history. In other words, the Tartar history was to be rewritten. Let us be frank, was to be falsified in order to eliminate references to the great Russian aggression and to hide the fact of the real cause of the Tartar Russian relations. And this was no isolation, isolated case. In every Muslim area within the United, within the USSR, historians on the order of the Communist Party have rewritten history to distort the facts so that the Russians appear always in a good light. Needless to say, histories which precedes the facts truthfully has been withdrawn and destroyed so that the present and future um, generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance of learning the true facts of their nation's past. So there was Muslims in Russia? Wow. Mm, interesting. See, this is where we get the term blackmail from. Because <laughs> we wouldn't allow for them to be on the seas. And they had to pay us ransom. And these are the same by blood now. The Empress says that uh, she is the um, great great granddaughter of Marie Antoinette, six times removed, and it really the heir, the, the right, um, the rightful heir to the throne of France, Spain, England by blood, by royal blood. All right, and it comes down that she was part of the Habsburg Empire which would be part of the Holy Roman Empire, which included Western Europe, the Bourbon state, also known as the Imperial International Empire um, Estate of the Bourbon Habsburg, um, which included the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Nepal, Sardinia, Spain, and Portugal, as well as North America, Caribbean, South and Central America. Okay, all over. This is why you see us everywhere. Right, right here, even in Stolen Lexi, George G. James had to reveal this information to us and they had to kill him masonically and they slit his throat from ear to ear and pulled out his tongue. For this way, he's getting ready to reveal right here, the Grand Lodge of Luxor, the 
The ruins of the ancient Grand Lodge of Luxor was found today on the banks of the Nile in Upper Egypt in the ancient city of Thebes. It was built by Pharaoh Amenhotep III. It was only Grand Lodge of the world, of the ancient world. It was the only Grand Lodge of the ancient world. So there was no United Grand Lodge of England that these um, Prince Hall Moors are so gladly claiming part of. The only lodge in the world was the Grand Lodge of the ancient world. It had branches and minor lodges throughout the ancient world. Where? In Europe, ancient, um, in Asia, Africa, North America, South America, and probably in Australia. These were some of the places. Palestine at Mount Camel, Syria at Mount Hermon, and um, now, now remember, this is the same mount, y'all. Harmon is the same mount. Remember, I told you I lived on Harmon Street. This is the same mount that the that the beings who they call the fallen angels came down on, and this is where they put one of the um, grand one of the lodges at from the Grand Lodge of Luxor, Mount Hermon in Lebanon, Babylon, Medea, near the Red Sea, India, on the banks of the Gan. Burma, Athens, Rome. Um, this is why Rome um, took over. But that the whole Roman thing was actually um, designed by um, the Tartarians, the Moors, who's called the Berbers or the Barbarians. Matter of fact, you take the word Tartarian and take the word Barbarian or Barbary um, and replace the B's and the T's, you get the same word. Croton, Rose, Delphi, Militus, Cyprus, Carthens, Crete, Central and South America, especially Peru. Among the ancient Indians, among the American Indians, and among the Mayans, Aztecs, Incas of Mexico. This is where masonry, the real masonry that is, the real Freemasonry that is, was formed. All right? And they tell you that it was by all of these um, melanated people. Africa, there's a huge city built with stones. Dimension stones could be compared to those used in the Temple of um, Chen Dynasty of North Africa. The skin of the people here is black leather, a liquor. Um, their teeth are white, their lips are red, and their hair curled. Um, Australia, the skin of the Aborigines are black too. All of them are naked and wear um, articles around their waist. These people have, um, may have um, athero um, forfagious habits. North America, the people living in the area are similar to um, the Kidan and Mongols who feed on fish. The skin of the people in the area is black, red, and feathers are wrapped around their heads and waist. All right? South America, the cities were built with huge stones. All right, the people here believed to be named Balaka which in um, human beings are used as sacrificial um, um, victims. It says there was more than 20 stones here. And it says, um, they don't speak about how these people look, but we know that it's true. If they was black and red in, in, Amer in North America, they got to be that way there. Because if somebody got to explain this, how we are melanated all over the planet, they're going to try to say, oh, we, we took slaves to all these places. Or you took slaves to Uruguay, Thailand, India, Malaysia, America, Suriname. Ain't no one in hell, Doc. Is that one in hell, Doc? Right. And you couldn't get you couldn't get twenty million people on a boat right now to take them to all these right. different places. They it is not one craft big enough to do it right now. Exactly. Folks ain't going. Or them or, or explain how to get them Omeg heads out of the woods in the middle of Mexico and Belize and Peru. You know what I'm saying? Can't exactly. move with those right now. Exactly. It's a Mount Hermon plantation in Mount. Mm-hmm. Crazy crow. Yeah. <laughs> Genghis Khan, who was melanated. He helped form what is now known as the Tartarian, all right, um, in the ancient Kushite Empire. She goes in, 
This is um, Drusilla Houston. I'll show that part right quick. Let me see. Okay, right here. The Northern Arcadians and the Southern Sumerians are both Kushites. The finds of recent exploration in the Mesopotamian Valley reveals that these ancient inhabitants were black with the cranial formation of Ethiopians. Right? Then she goes on. The Turanians is one of the oldest races in the world. Came the name of the important branch of the Hamitic family. Once Turan and Kush occupied a greater part of Asia and Europe, the Turanians lived east of Lake Ural from remote ant um, ant um, antiquity. They possess a particular, uh, peculiar civilization characterized by gross Sabianism. In them was complete um, want to moral devel development. Through they had extraordinary advancement in such um, branches of knowledge. They was materialistic and incapable of having created this pure spiritual culture of primitive Chaldean. The Turanians had absolute sovereignty over a great part of Asia and Europe for 1,500 years. Now, who are the Turanians? As they said, they was connected to the Kushites. So it was over Asia and Europe. So we're really talking about this one world Tartarian system that we was talking about. And this is why they have to hide all this information. This is why they have to hide all this information. All right, they have to hide it. Hmm. So we know where the terms L and Bay comes from. Um, it has the E lights and the Bay lights. Are uh, really the L's and Bays. Shemesh is the deity of the law, an eight sided octagon, octagon representing Saturn. Shemash or Chemos is the god of the Moabites. Sham or Shem is where you get a Mexum or She, as in the She people of the Omex. Shem is the father of the Canaanites or so called Hebrews. Once again, it all points back to so-called Negroes of the West. So here we have, right here, Ben Shemesh, the children of the son of the sun. The term belongs to a period when the Jews, who are talking about the Hebrews, were divided into sun and moon worshipers, the Elites and the Baylites. In other words, the Els and the Bays. Sound like, sound like moonlight, sunlight. Exactly. Luna and solar, exactly. All right. So these are just some of the structures in which that we had, and it's still around the planet Earth to this very day, and it was destroyed. All right. In some cases, destroyed, like this hotel here. This is the original Waldorf Astoria built in 1893, demolished in 1929 to give way to the Empire State Building. This is um, the Waldorf Astorian now in New York City. This is all over the world. The Tartarians, through their ancient mystery school system of the ancient Egyptians, built these um, structures this architecture, beautiful structure, extraordinary structure around the world. Around the world. Some of these things still exist. They have them now as colleges. They have them now as post office. They have them now as castles. They have them now as um, old buildings, courthouses. All right. This here is in San Francisco. California. These are castles, all right? These are towns throughout Europe, Warsaw, Poland. We now think that these are courthouses and 
Uh, these are all from the one world Tartarians, the great civilization ever to be erased from our history, who is known as the Berbers, who is known as the Moors, who is known as um, the Barbarians, the Barbarians. The word Barbarian and the word Tartarian are one and the same. Replace the Bs for the T. And Barbarians. T A R T A I A N S. Tartarians. So the Barbarians and the Tartarians, who are the Berbers, who are the Kushites, who are the Moors, one and the same people. All right? One and the same people. Here they are. You can see them. Black, tan, as they call them. Shoot, Alexander um, Dumas, the world um, famous author of The Three Musketeers, The Count of um, Monte Cristo, and other historical novels of high adventure. He was melanated and he was from out of where? Russia. Okay, what they now call, these, these are the people um, in which that came from the Mongolian, a Mongoloid strain, the Asian strain, all right, that is now in Siberia, all right? And also in Alaska, they get the um, Eskimos, as we was reading earlier. This is in Russia. Look at that gigantic foot. This is in, um, in Russia. I mean, good God Almighty. Look at these structures. We did this all over the world with our advanced technology, not no goddamn aliens, as they keep telling us. Oh, the aliens built these pyramids, the aliens. Hey, hey, hey. This ancient um, um, alien shit that they keep coming up, which is a ploy. This is what they tore down. Look at this magnificent building, and they tore it down. This is them trying to hide. Look at this. This is them building on top of our civilization. This is what they did. Look at this. The buildings that they left, like this one here. Still there. This right here is the only, out of this whole city, as you see here, this is the only one um, that survived that was, um, and they destroyed the rest 104 years ago. That was in San Francisco. This is based on them do, using the world fairs and the exposition. These world fairs and expositions. This is Chicago in 1893. And who founded Chicago? Jane the Baptiste, Point du Sebo. In Haitian, as they refer to him as. But they claim that he was uh, a non indigenous. Hold up, he was indigenous. Wherever we go and we put our foot on, we make it indigenous land because we ourselves are indigenous. Right? So what if the defeat of the great Tartarians was recorded in the official history um, using the name of the fall of Troy, the fall of the Roman Empire, the fall of Constantinople, dissolution of the Ottoman Empire, the war for American um, independence, collapse of the Qing Dynasty, downfall of the Russian Empire, defeat of the um, Astro-Hungarian Empire in the world um, World War I. This is what they did. All of those wars was claiming control over our items. This is the only thing in which that is left from the city that we've seen. That's what it was talking about. And as you've seen, these was Muslims, Moors, because we know that the word Moor and Muslim is one and the same. So these was Moors, right? These are actual um, wireless energy. We think I'm talking about wireless energy today. This is wireless energy that they were using over 100 damn years ago. That was extracted from the, we used the energy extracted from the atmosphere and we used these urban poles to do it. 
this is in 1790, um, atmospheric electricity in France. This is um, exposition building illuminated in um, Australia in 1900. But well, remember, allegedly, there was no electricity indoors at this time period in the 1900s. In 1790, there was none of that. Hmm. So what if Einstein, Panikke, Faraday, Marconi, Hertz, and Maxwell, among many others, were characters played by some gray men who destroyed the existing high technology of the Tartarians to give us expensive crumbs in return. And who did that? J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan did that, all right? Who was, who was basically the Rockefellers, all right? J.D. Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller. This is who went around the world destroying, relabeling, as we were saying earlier, of the ancient information of the Moors. This is what they was doing. This is what they have done to our history. This is what they've done to our history. This, this is, this, this is crazy because they are scared of these people here, our ancestors. And they scared of our ancestors' greatest bet, which is us, you know? Yeah, and here we are, showing that we had technology of flying pyramids. This is the Tartarian, so we, so remember I showed you earlier that we had um, the Nazis had man-made UFOs, which they did not get from alien technology. They got the shit from the Tartarians, the Berbers, the Moors. This is where they got the technology from. All right? These are the giants. Right? You got the slave species of the gods, the secret history of the Anunnaki's and their mission to Earth by Michael Umtelliger. This is him standing in, in South Africa in front of a footprint that's four feet um, um, in length. Meaning that whoever put this here had to be between 25 to 30 feet tall. And this is all over the world, Russia, India, United States. In recent years, more footprints came, Spain, Sri Lanka, Paraguay, um, Bangalore, um, Botswana, Texas, Australia, Thailand, Canada, New Mexico, Russia, Alaska, Syria, Brazil, um, Belize, and um, Cleveland, Ohio. It was giants in those days. They were still here. It's just like a fish. If you take a, um, if you get a bowl about this big and you put a, um, a, um, a fish in it, the fish can be, let's say the fish is a, um, what's the little yellowish fish? What do they call them? Goldfish or fish. koi fish. Yeah, the little, you put a goldfish in a little bowl, the fish would stay that same size in order to adapt to the size of the bowl. However, if you put, the, um, um, put it in a lake or a pond, that fish will become a, a, a corp, C-A-R-P, in which they can grow this large. From this little bitty goldfish to this large of a fish. So this is the problem. The diminishing in which that we've seen um, is because of us feeling and being in a relegated, oppressive, suppressive, depressive state. This is why you see here, these skeleton figures represent just a few giant remains unearthed and documented in historical record along with the historical account of Goliath, all right? Um, and as you see here, six feet, 15 feet, 8.6 feet, 
um, 10.6 feet, 12 feet, 9.6 feet, um, 23 feet, 25.6 feet, 36 feet. And this is the Carthaginians on, on Earth uncovered these two sizes. An earthquake in the um, Samarian Bephosphus um, uncovered one more. And so we have proof of actually being 50 to 200 feet tall. All right, and I'll show you them. Here it is right here. Soft tissue bodies encased in mudslides and floods. The tissues are, are invaded by minerals and bones are replaced by minerals. The body turns to stone and the body uh, fluids turns into crystals. Damn, I never look at a mountain the same way. Here it is. Damn. So we talk about people who was over 36 feet tall in some cases. All right, right here. Giant of prehistoric France. So this is all over the world. Bones were found in the skull was also giant proportion. It says belong to men, race of men between 10 to 15 feet in height. They were the mound builders. Giant skeleton, 18 feet tall in Texas, in Maryland, Greece. all over the world. National Geographics, unearthing the giant. They found these giants in mounds. Right, no coincidence. Okay, and it goes on. These are various um, articles which stems all the way from 1829 to 1965 about these various beings, skeletons of giants in Alaska. Look at this, a 23 foot tall skeleton was found in 1456 in Valence, France, a 19.6 Human skeleton was found in 1577 on Earth over um, overturned oak tree in the um, canyon or canton of the Serre. 25 um, foot point six feet skeleton was found in 1613 near the castle of um, Caramont in France. Two separate 36 feet tall remains unearthed by Carthaginians dated 200 to 600 BC. Get the books, Giants, The Amazing Truth, Tim Sparks. Articles, Giants of North America, Australia, Africa, China, Ecuador, Philippines, Mexico. Goes on and on, Nicaragua, Maravilla, Morocco, Asolution Islands, Israel, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, Indonesia, Tibet, India, Turkey. Same place that we lived, they lived. These was our fathers. New Zealand, South Pacific, that Arnold Bilaj Mohammed talked about. Hong Kong, China. The ancient, oh, here it is, the giants in America, 1600s. Twice the size of the average man, as you see here. Giant bones in Mexico, 10 to 15, 12 feet tall, cave, um, found in, um, skeletons found in caves. Also beneath, um, between 1894 to 1921, mineralogist, archaeologist William Nevin um, discovered ancient cities in Mexico that dated to the beginning of the Pleistocene era, which was 2.5 million years ago. Some cities was built further into the, uh, the Tetarian, um, the Tetarian um, era. Beneath volcanic ashes, Nevins discovered over 2,600 stone tablets, as well as the modern human skull that show negroid, negroid genetic markers. 
Of course, because we was the only ones on the planet Earth 2.5 million years ago. Get the book, Ancient Presence in the Ancient America, they came before Columbus. The Ancient Presence in America before Columbus, Floyd Hayes. This is on the one to the left is by Ivan von Sotoma, who I've seen several times years ago at Fever State University. But in the book, What They Never Told You in History Class, it says the black gods of the ancient America. And it shows us as the Omex and his, the blacks began his career in America, not his slave, but his master. The first Americans were black, all right? Um, we're using those terminologies because this is what is in the book, but we know that we was Moors, indigenous, aboriginal, all right? So this is what we're talking about. And it shows you also that the Omex were also giants, giants in Mexico, Nephilims among the Toltecs and the Omex, okay? Showing you this, known as the mound builders. Traditions of giants. This is by Ross Hamilton. And he breaks it down. How the ancient speaks about all these individuals in the traditions of the ancient giants. Coming from the Iroquois, the Osage, the Tuscarora, the Huron, the Omaha, and many other North American Indians all speak of giant men who once lived in Rome in the territories of their forefathers. See, this is what we're talking about, right? This is us and our people. And it goes on, he even say the Cherokee, the Choctaw, all of them speaks about it. In fact, seeing all of them, look at this, this is all in New York Times, 1888. You don't get none of this nowadays. I'll be damned if you get anything written about giants in the newspapers. <laughs> oh yeah, get some propaganda. Vote. Right. Even here, ever wonder how New York Giants got the name? It comes from a um Inuk Eskimo legend of giants that once lived in the area before Europeans came. It's on record that there would used to be a huge fourth on fortress in New York legend saying was built by these giants. When the British soldiers was building forts there, they dismantled the ancient ruins to build their own. This is how they did it. These are the so-called African-American community that died in Central Park, but yet it's called Seneca Village. These are Seneca and the Native Americans that once roamed and controlled New York. Central Park area. Like this is Amstad. This is who they claim um, um, did Central Park. <laughs> hey, God, go back real quick to that Drew Hill. Yeah. I've been in that country club uh, a million times. It's right off Ponce de Leon. I actually spent a couple of years down there with a friend of mine um, working on a loan program. And Drew Hills is actually where um, it's, it's one of the only 18 course um, golf clubs. Golf clubs, right. And this is this they claim that he designed that too. Right, yeah. right, right, right. It's uh it's, it's native territory, indigenous territory, but the craziest thing is it's exactly. actually where the formula for Coca-Cola was sold. So Coca-Cola okay. was actually founded right there in that Drew Hills Country Club. Like, there it is. The history of that is just crazy. There it is. So between 1792 to 1965. Like I showed you, over 60 burial mounds found in hundreds of skeletons from North America, ranging from nine to 18 feet tall from New York to California was found. All right, and we showed you even to the height of 36 feet tall. Get the book, Ancient Giants, History, Myth, and Scientific Evidence from Around the World. Exviant Hayes. Where are they storing these things at now, God? Um, the Smithsonian is de has destroyed hundreds of them. All right, maybe even thousands. Here it is. Origin, Ireland, Pitchett, London, 1895. Height is 12 feet tall and two inches. Weighed over 2,000 pounds. Why? Because the great Smithsonian cover-up, 18 giant skeletons discovered in Wisconsin. Under mounds, y'all, these are the mound builders, our ancestors. 
and it was all in New York Times, all in the various newspapers. You don't get none of this nowadays. Burial Mound of Giant Race held secret, whole secrets. Smithsonian. Go back to the last two. It said Giant India. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, Giant Indian Bones. Discovery wow. of Extraordinary. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep, the mound builders. Uh oh. Nine feet tall. Indiana. Keep going. I mean, remnants that still exist. Here it is. Joe Rogan, born 1868. And he grew normally until age 13. His height was not officially recorded until his death. At the point, he was 8.9 feet tall. Due to illness, he weighed only 175 pounds. He was the tallest, moderate, so-called Negro ever. He died in 1905 due to complication from his illness. This sister here, look at this sister, eight feet and two inches, 278 pounds. This is in Jet Magazine. All right, world's tallest man gets hit, a um, new hip um, um, replacement during operation. Uh oh, this is Gabriel S. Tava um, Manjan from Mozambique. Africa. Oh, we got the fair zone with the tassel too. All right now. Damn, son, tall. Oh yeah. Damn. Yeah, eight feet tall. And three quarters of an inch. This is um George Bell, um seven point eight feet tall. He was the tallest man. Um, matter of fact, he played with the um Harlem Globetrotters. Mm. Which one was the sheriff? Which one? This one tall guy. He about seven, eight feet. Shit, oh, Wilt. Shit, Wilt was the shit. Wilt, Wilt Chain. Um, shit, he from. He, shit, he he descended of that shit. Yo, he was tall as oh, hell yeah. too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Here it is, March eleventh, nineteen seventy six. Eight feet and one inches. Look at him. This is this is um Rayford Johnson, brother Rayford Johnson. Eight feet and one inch. That's a giant, y'all. This is us. This is this is who this is who built these mounds. Right? This this is this the ancient ones. Manu Bow. Manu. You know, uh, I was about to say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the time he got 18, 19, he was 7.7 7 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Another son. Okay. Mm. Wow. Send that to me, God. Um, so right here, ancient giants of Africa. All right. This is what we're talking about. Madam Um Oboma, the African giantess, the tallest woman in the world. All right. Some say that she got up to 7.6 feet tall. And she traveled to countries all over the world: Germany, Italy, France, Australia, and many more places. Some of the um people, what happened is that they're not real giants. Um, they have um, pressure, um, um, oftentimes coming from tumors or things that is impending upon the pituitary gland, which produces the growth hormone um, in puberty. And it's called um, acromegaly. It's a hormone disorder that develops when the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone during adulthood. And when this happens, your bones increase in size, increase those of your hands, your feet, and your face. Right, it affects middle-aged adults. All right, um, it can also um, um, cause um, problems. Um, otherwise, there's another name for it um, for the youth, though, which I can't remember right now. All right, I mean, which that can happen with the growth hormone. Um, if they get tumors and things like that, um, impinging upon the the pituitary gland which produces the growth hormone. So um, that's, that's, me f um, that's it for me for the night, y'all. Um, any questions or anything? Oh, son, you, son, you killed it, son. Yo, man. brother, I mean, I, I mean, just real quick question for me, man. Um, so 
esoteric and pragmatism, you know, are two things that I feel that have to meet, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if you're giving somebody a paradigm shift, it has to come with some type of instructions to, you know, realize the paradigm shift, right? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like when, you know, even when Morpheus woke Neo up, he was like, yo, let me teach you some Kung Fu, let me, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you yeah, can't right. just out here, you know, outside of the matrix and just wandering around, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. So, you know, what do you think is the next move for people who are digesting this information and now starting to, you know, awaken it to themselves? Like, you the know, nationality. Okay. Declaring, declaring the nationality that they indigenous, that they are indigenous, um, Aboriginal from here in North America. Not saying that you don't have ties to Africa, because you do. Not saying that you don't have ties to Australia, because you do. You have ties to all over the globe, as they would say, or as we would say, all over the world. <clears throat> you know, um, you have these ties and you have these connections. Um, the problem is, is that you have to realize that you have all these ties and connections um, and not just say that you are African um, American because that's a misnomer as we just finished seeing. Um, hell, even Africans don't even want to call themselves black. Um, I just finished seeing a um, video and Africans was like, we're not black. <laughs> All right? So they don't even want to say it. Right. So this is something in which that the world, the Europeans are throwing on everybody, and we don't have to accept it. You know, he, he's, he's not a factor in our lifespan. On Earth, <laughs> it, look, we went to 2.8 billion years ago. He just got here 6,000 some odd years ago. He's not a factor in our existence at all, truthfully. He's here to produce one thing, and the result is to transform us just like a black piece of coal. When you put pressure to it, heat to it, what does it transform into after time? A diamond. A shining diamond. We are that black piece of coal. We are that ca carbon. We are, those car that's that. we are the carbon being, all right? And we're supposed to be pressurized, heated up, you know, all these things that's going on makes us become a refined diamond to transform us into a diamond like um, um, crystalline ex exterior. You know what I'm saying? Interior and exterior. So, this is what his purpose is on planet Earth is to help us grow. All right? That's it. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, he's not a factor in anything in which that we're supposed to be doing for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We have allowed for him to become a factor in our existence. And so super, and oh, I should say, and override our um, common sense, you know, in, in, in our existence, you know? Um, and, and he did a good job, you know, put it on TV. The TV is the most popular mind control agent there still is, you know? Facts, facts. How does a person now, you know, take the time to reclaim their nationality? I know you got to get to your queen, so, you know, I ain't going to hold you too much longer. Right. Well, well, the science is that once you declare your nationality, of course, you have to find um, a, uh, as according to the indigenous, uh, you know, the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, it says that you have a right to belong to a community, belong to a nation. So you have to find a community or a nation in which that offers, you know, indigenous, aboriginal, connections here in North America, you know, and not just in Africa, you know, not just in Australia or just in Europe or anywhere where so-called black people, so-called black people reside at, you know what I'm saying, which is all over the world, you know, but specifically here in America saying, look, we was here before 400 years ago. I showed a document coming from the book, um, Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Cream or Richard L. Thompson that stated that we was already here 600 million years ago. I showed, I showed the um, bell-shaped structure that they found, you know, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. So we was already here, you know. So, you know, if we say and allow the European to say that we just, that they brought all of us here 400 years ago, then we're doing a disservice to our ancestry, to our forefathers and foremothers, to my grandmother and grandfather, so forth and so on. As you stated, who stated we was not, enslaved. We're not slaves. We, we did not come from that. 
not saying that there are some people who did did come from that. They did, you know, they do have that history, but that doesn't mean that you can't, they brought us from Africa. That just simply means that they could have captured you along the coast of, um, of, of um, the Eastern seaboard, maybe in Central America, the adjoining islands, or even in, um, you know, along Brazil and South America and brought you up, your ancestry up along the coast into, you know, um, Georgia, South America, um, South um, Carolina, North Carolina, so forth and so on, or whatever the case is. But that still makes you indigenous from the Americas, regardless, and not from Africa, because it don't make sense to do a four-month voyage from America to Africa when you can then go up and down the coast and just say, look, we bought these niggas from Africa, and but you got them from damn Brazil, or you got them from, <laughs> you know, you got them from Florida, but you taking them up to Virginia. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Economy, you know, that whole thing about the economy would have been destroyed trying to do a damn four month voyage. That will only give you three voyages out the year. When you damn have all these niggas up and down the coast of North America, South America, Central America, and the adjoining islands, you wouldn't have to do that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. Blessings, man. Last question of the night, God. Um, with you, the Declaration of Indigenous Peoples, man. Um, it's interesting. It came out the year after we went up there, you know, and uh, you know, right. According to, United, according to the United Nations, the, um, Indigenous people said those who have historical continuity here in the Americas prior to the invasion of their territory by the Europeans. Hmm. All right. Well as, and it says, as well as those who was born here to the new world and who wish to reattach themselves to their history, culture. So, hold up. That means even those who was born here to the new world who, as they say, freed themselves in the definition of the, um, of the United Nations are also indigenous. So this debate between people who say that they are American or the people who say that they are just pure African. The fact is, is that according to the United Nations, we're both indigenous and therefore that's the premise that we can work off of instead of the argument. We're indigenous. We are the oldest people on planet Earth. This is what I proved through the presentation of the pygmies showing you that we were also the giants, we was also the Kushites, we was also the um, Ethiopians, we was also the Phoenicians, we the Canaanites, we was also on and on. We were also the Native Americans. We was also the Aborigine. We was also the African. Mound builders. Yeah. Right. We also the mound builders. We also uh, um, the copper colored natives that was all the way up in goddamn Greenland. <laughs> Time to reclaim your nationality and your heritage. Yeah, right. That's the action stuff. Right. And as I said in my video, we was all over the world. <laughs> all right. No doubt. Blessings. No doubt. <laughs> Yo, appreciate the information. It was an honor to be on with you tonight, God. Thank you, Hassan, for, you know, blessing me with this. Oh, no That's doubt, man. I yeah. mean, brother, another one in the books. I got to get up here. I think my daughter's still rolling around. With her little. It's all right. Yeah, I got to get home, too. Yeah, man, you brothers. Well, um, man, we'll, definitely, um, we'll definitely do this again, man. You know, they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to, they gonna have to uh, you know, rewind this one a couple times, though. You, you hear them? You hit them hard, like as you always do. You know what I mean. So, man. Want to thank everybody for getting on. You know what I mean. And Colin, uh, don't be a stranger, guy. Give me a call sometime. <laughs> really. Yo, I'm back in full effect, God man. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna be easy to catch from now on. All right, I got you. <laughs> well, hey man, I appreciate y'all, fellas, man. No we're gonna, doubt. We're gonna definitely do no this doubt. again, man. Peace to the thank God. You. Thank you, God. And, uh, every, everybody, you know, on, on my HG station, man, look, it's another one in the books, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Man, All right? Blessings to your family, yo. Y'all be safe, oh, yeah. y'all. Yeah. All right. One. One.